they're doing this rehearsal, by the way, which is in the basement of a movie theater with zero soundproofing. So like, yeah. I can't imagine watching a movie in the porn theater and hearing them yeah. rehearsing in the basement. But is there still a dragon? <laughs> 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 God damn! Can't concentrate. Uh, this movie was pretty dull until then. Damn! Just, all right. You just got a guy. You just got a guy in the back of that theater. It's just like, <laughs> he's like, he's like, oh, they they, they finally got it right. They've been practicing for weeks. Thank God they finished that up so he I can finish. He finally did the squeal and not the ping. <laughs> not the ping. No, that's a ping. No, raunchier. Well, hello, and welcome to the Confused Breakfast. Do you remember the pure joy of a trip to the video rental store as a kid? Oh, yeah. It's hard to beat the ease of the modern era in streaming platforms where you don't even have to leave your couch, but there was something truly special about throwing on some guy liner and tight leather pants, mm -hmm. heading to Blockbuster, picking out a movie by hand, and taking it home to watch. On this podcast, we revisit and dissect some of our favorite childhood movies from that magical era to see if they still move us the way they did as kids. My name is Mike Schulte, and I'm a businessman. And rule number one in this business is you go where the talent is, and all the fucking talent is with me in this room. Sean Pryor and AJ Vance, how the heck are you? Sorry. Very kind thing of you to say. Sorry, everybody else who you were considering, but... Uh, yeah. There was no other consideration. Well, the, the thing is, a lot of people ask me, they're like, hey, man, how do I get a successful podcast? And I was like, get get you some talent. Yeah. You got to get you some talent as I pour my beer awkwardly. Um, and I don't mean you talent because you don't have talent. You bring in people that have talent. Oh, okay. That's you guys. Yeah. Gotcha. That's yeah, what yeah, I yeah. meant by that. Thanks, man. You can't just get talent. Stand nope. up and shine. <laughs> is that... <laughs> That's how you do vibrato. If vibrato's just shaking, <laughs> yeah. I th that's how I was taught in <laughs> choir. Everyone knows that. Everyone knows that. It's just yeah. <laughs> you you need a shaker behind you. Just. That's how they train you. Yeah, when you're a kid. Well, my dudes, on Wait. today's episode, we discuss a movie that made us all want to join our favorite rock bands. A movie that reminds <laughs> us all how great hair metal is. Yeah. Uh -huh. A movie that was brought up on trial in a previous episode. A mistrial ensued, so we left it up to our Patreon members to decide if we needed a full episode. They unanimously said yes. Obviously. We're, of course, talking about 2001's Rockstar. Yeah, buddy. Well, damn dang it. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for another nostalgic journey to the past with the Confused Breakfast. Sit back, relax, and enjoy wherever you are in the world. Take it away, boys. Well, if you are new to this amazing podcast with amazing hosts, we're going to be reviewing this amazing movie, but we're going to do it scene by scene with a modern eye. But in order That's to me. do that properly, we must first discuss it with pure nostalgia. AJ, let's start with you. Tell us the first time you saw Rockstar and what your nostalgic rating is. Was First time seeing this, um, the one thing that really comes to mind is uh, never wanted somebody to pierce my nipples for me. Well, that's up until seeing this movie. Mm. Yeah, um, just Jennifer Aniston. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, she's like a showstopper in this, and not just because she's gorgeous, but I think I, I, I love that her like her character throughout the entire movie. To be honest, watching this movie though for the first time, it was like it was like the fantasy that everyone wants to come true, especially when you're like younger. Um, you just want to get discovered. <laughs> and if you just keep doing your thing and don't don't care about anything else and don't actually don't try to do anything other than just be really good at singing, apparently your thing, your thing, then oh people God. just pick you That's up. That's where this episode's gonna go. <laughs> 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 uh oh. <laughs> so no, I remember. I do remember watching this like for the first time, and I think I think it was a DVD because I remember holding on to the the uh, the case of it. And us putting it in, and I don't know who I watched it with. I, I really wish I could, but I was kind of enthralled with the movie. I thought it was awesome. I thought it was so much fun, and like getting to watch like oh this rock star lifestyle and how you this must just be what it is. So 
I, I was a big fan of the movie, man. I, I, back then, I would give it an 8.8. Nice. 8.8. Yeah. Sean, or what about you, man? On top of the trench coat trinity that was Blade, The Matrix, and The Crow, mm. I was a sucker and uh, a glutton for these types of movies where it was like the romantic lead was doing his dream and and also had the the girl to back him up and everything. Mm. Uh, you follow I love, your dreams, you get the girl. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. It's only that's the only way. I think that's how it goes, right? <clears throat> um, but yeah, I loved all these movies. I, I had to have seen uh, in two two thousand two. I believe it was like on early uh, pay per view, like wa- like you had to buy it on TV oh, to watch. Yeah. And so me and my mom did that, and uh, yeah, loved it. Loved the loved Mark Wahlberg in it, and I remember thinking the song that he had at the end was like it truly made me emotional. M- might have changed nowadays. <laughs> I hope we so. will see. Um, yeah, loved it. I'm I'm with you, AJ. I am a nine on this. Heck Niner. Yeah. Uh, this is a little different for me because when I saw this, I was firmly entrenched in the indie band world. I was I was in my original band, um, and oh, and nice. I and like hair metal was never really my thing. Like sure, I can say that that has changed now. Later in life, I look back on hair metal like yeah, this is fucking awesome, it's super fun. But but then I was not a fan of it. I didn't like that big arena rock and roll. I didn't really like Mark Wahlberg all that much. But like the coolness of like, oh man, Nick, I could be on that big stage was sort of overshadowed by just like, eh, I just didn't really like the movie. So it's a big old blah for me. Mm. Originally, it's probably a six. Okay. Just a just a eh, whatever. Who cares? Okay. Uh, we do have an executive producer today, Michael Giuliano. He said I had never heard of this movie, had no idea that it existed, or any idea what it was about. In fact, when I went to look up Rockstar, the uh, Rockstar in quotations movie, to see if I knew which movie you guys were talking about, the first result that came up was a Bollywood movie from 2011. <laughs> yep. Yep. So either this was <laughs> either this movie is a really hidden gem, or I just suck at Google. Nostalgically, this is a big. Big NA for me. So wow. Michael likes doing this. He likes stepping up to be like first time watch. Let's see I, what I love that. Love it was that. Pulp Fiction a couple weeks ago. Yes, which is a crazy right? one. He's like, yeah. I never seen it. I, I love to see that our executive producers like us sometimes were like, oh, I haven't seen it. Never seen it. To discover you, you it, you like get this. excited about that. Yeah. You know, it's that coveted thing that we talk about. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. So as a group, nostalgically, we are a seven point nine three, which go. is not too bad. If you're looking at all the movies we've done, that's going to find itself all alone at spot number thirty three. That is right below St. Elmo's Fire, right right above Flight of the Navigator. Okay, is just where that lands. And again, it just yeah. no rhyme or reason. We really don't care. Yeah. The segment will eventually go someday. I'll just skip over it. <laughs> in the just end. in the you know, hopefully we'll save some time. <laughs> yeah. But for now, we still do it. <laughs> Okay. (laughs) But we're going to move on to modern day talk here. So we got to go to Sean. We got to learn all the important details of the movie. Sean, that's your job. There's parts that we just don't give a shit about this show, but but Sean's, we really do. No, that's why I'm like, let's move on. Let's get on to Sean's. Jeez, who cares about Uh, nostalgia? I I wish I had them because uh, they're gone. So I'll try and do them off the top of my head. Okay. <laughs> um, oh, wait, for real? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's I mean, fun. I got all the, the producers and everything, but everything else is gone. Produced by Toby Jaffe, uh, pr- uh, Robert Lawrence, and George Clooney. <laughs> Written by John Stockwell. He also wrote Blue Crush and Cougar and... He was in top, or he was Cougar in Top Gun. Is what I'm trying to say. Okay. He was the uh, uh, Tom Cruise's yep. partner At in the, the beginning. beginning. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. Music by Trevor Rabin. Uh, also did Hot Rod, Kangaroo Jack, and movies that we have covered, Con Air, Armageddon, and Gone in 60 Seconds. Cinematography by Uli Steiger. He also did Singles, Better Off Dead, Godzilla, the one with Broderick, and oh. Bowfinger. You said Uli, the beaver picture? <laughs> 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 All right. Nice. Check it. <laughs> Directed by Stephen Herrick. He also did Critters, uh, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, and The Mighty Ducks. Cast, Mark Wahlberg, Jennifer Aniston, Dominic West, Jason Bonham, Jeff Pilson, Zach Wilde, Timothy Spall, Dogmara Dominique. Yep. Dominic. Got it. Jason Fleming, Miles Kennedy, and Timothy Oliphant. Um, so I believe that there was a bidding war on this movie, and uh, Warner Brothers uh, got it. And um, then George Clooney's production company, he had like a small indie production company, he um, wanted to uh, also invest in this. And so he had worked with uh, Wahlberg on Three Kings, yeah. and so oh, got Wahlberg, right. Wahlberg into it. Love that movie. That I was kind of that. 
that was kind of his uh, contribution, like his big contribution, other than a chunk of money to it as well. Um, but it was uh, Brad Pitt, actually. Can you imagine? Because like I feel like I cast. can. Yeah, and I feel like I would like this. At this time, two thousand one, fight, uh, fight Club's been done right, now. Ninety nine is yep. Fight Club. So yeah, he's Legends yeah, I don't of know. the Fall, mm. long haired know. Brad Pitt. He he could have he. There's no doubt he could have done it. Of course, it would have been probably phenomenal. It really doesn't take much. There is a part of like some of this character that would be hard to buy into with, yes. with it being okay. Brad Pitt, though. So okay, I hear I'll just you. put that out there yeah. for now. He dropped out due to creative differences, but uh, like I said, George Clooney got on Mark Wahlberg, and uh, here we are with Marky Mark. Um, it's, it's kind of loosely inspired by uh, a thing that happened to... Judas Priest. Yeah, what's right? his name? Um, uh, Rob Halford? Well, well, yeah, Rob Halford was being replaced in Judas Priest. Priest here we go. It's uh, Tim Ripper Owens. He was a uh, he was a, even a tribute band for Judas Priest. And when Rob Halford was kind of t- uh, taking some time off to do his own solo career, uh, they asked Ripper to fill in his spot on their tours mm. to like actually tour as Judas Priest. So it was like this, you know, inspiring to be Judas Priest kind of thing. And they actually got him to do it. So loosely inspired on that. But um, yeah, other than that, Mark Wahlberg, like I said in our trial episode, to defend this thing. He uh, really got into the character. That's his real hair in the movie. Mm-hmm. He grew his hair out. He walked the L.A. boardwalk and uh, just in L.A., like the music scene, uh, metal scene, and the cover band scene. Oh, man. Uh, as uh, <laughs> as character. I got I got to research this uh, character, so I got to go. Some bands. <laughs> uh. Is that Mark Wahlberg? I'm Chris Cole. No. Is he? Is he? <laughs> call, 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 me, call me Chrissy. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I mean, uh, basically... That's that's kind of it, to be honest. There's not much on this. Well, it's uh, very. Th- I think we talked about this in the on trial episode that this movie came out September 9th, two thousand one. Right, September seventh. That's that's that sucks. Yeah, <laughs> it, it really got buried by uh, something that happened. Yeah, some big a few event days later took place and yeah. released, yeah, released in two thousand one, September seventh. It was on a budget of thirty eight to. 57 point million? <laughs> Something I, like I, that. What's wrong with these people what anymore? What the hell? Uh, May 19.3 did not do very well. Um, and then, yeah, that's kind of it for this movie, guys. Sorry, my, my notes just got straight up deleted on this. So mm, it's all right. that, that's pretty much the gist. There's not much on this movie. What, like, literally, as our executive producer, Michael Giuliano, pointed out, I look up on YouTube <laughs> to like kind of watch if people have done reviews on this or anything yep. like that, and it is mostly that Bali movie. Yeah. So. Well, let's go on to AJ. Let's learn what the critics and fans have to say about this ratings reviews. What do you got, brah? Oh boy. Stand up and shout. The tomato meter. <laughs> Gross. You got me. Damn got it. him. <laughs> yeah. He's so excited to sing. <laughs> this is fifty-three percent. Splat. Uh, but what do the critics know? They what do the critics know? That is tied with the burbs. They don't know shit. They don't know anything. They don't know shit. They don't know. <laughs> you're, you're a splat. <laughs> <laughs> it's like someone just got slimed on Nickelodeon. <laughs> Ooh, Nickelodeon. Ooh, that's the sore yeah. subject right now. Sorry, sorry everybody. Big old there. yanks. That's yeah. all right. Drake Bill's still dropping his album at the same time. We'll talk about it. Uh, 59% audience score. On their 6.3 IMDb rating. That is tied with Waterworld in the bottom 20 <laughs> of any movies we've, we've done. Oh, that is man. bottom 20. Why does that work so well? Yeah, well I, yeah. I like to pick the good ones, but it doesn't lie. 6.3 is what the fans also think of Waterworld. Okay. I kind of love that. Um, I found uh, mm-hmm. in 2001, there's a reviewer. Uh, it's Quipsters. Um, Vince Leo. Um, he said that... Uh, the lion's share of the credit should go to screenwriter John Stockwell, uh, whose attention to detail and knowing insights uh, make for a film that has fun with the subject matter without making a mockery of it. Okay, so it has as good as al- it's not as good as Almost Famous, given the similar subject matter, but Rockstar delivers entertainment with heart, especially for those who grew up in the '80s. So Vince Leo liked this. Good job. Um, let's see. We got some bad ones in here, guys. Um, Michael Sragow, you know, Schlute, sorry, uh, Michael Schlute Hell yeah. from the Baltimore Sun. Bring it, I don't know why we don't call him. That. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. I just wanted to bring it back. <laughs> I love it. I still, if I ever, if I'm ever sad, I just watch the video of us in the hotel room <laughs> laughing. I told about Craig that. about it earlier and I'm petitioning him to call you that. Yep, Mike Schlute. Mike Schlute. Uh, uh, 
From the Baltimore Sun, 38 out of 100, 3.8 out of 10. Rockstar neither touches a raw nerve nor garners any resonance as a period piece. You'd be better off renting This Is Spinal Tap. Oh. Interesting. Interesting, Good stuff. interesting perspective. Okay. Uh, oh, let's see. Uh, the Miami Herald, Rene Rodriguez, 50 out of 100. Like the type of music it celebrates, Rockstar is just a lot of posing adding up to very little. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, was there anything good from them? No, there really wasn't. Uh, but there was a lot. There was some good things happening here from uh, the the fans. Ten out of ten, the best movie ever in 2020. I love it. Let's said hear it. Andrew Zelino. I don't care who thinks. Uh, I don't care who thinks what. It has vibe. It has amazing music. It has a story. It has soul. It's rock and roll, baby. Hell yeah. Great. Power to you. Wow. Mm, great. I, we love it. We Good lo- job, dude. <laughs> we love it, okay? <laughs> um, I'm going to actually find... Uh, let me just... Did yours me, get deleted, too? Mine mine probably got... No, mine totally got deleted, guys. Yeah. Oh. Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> no, I just... <laughs> Mike, did yours get deleted? No, or? mine are right here. Oh, good. <laughs> 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 I just wanted to go into our Discord, actually, the uh, Little Lebowski Urban Achievers. Yeah. Uh, let's give a give a shout out from Wes Clark. Wes, he said the first time that I watched the ro- watch Rock Star was with my stepdad. He put uh, he put it on, and I had no idea it even existed. He said he was blown away. Uh, stand up and shout, baby. Definitely would say that this is a seven point six out of ten. I was also uh, excited to hear he's he's excited to hear our takes on it with the musical backgrounds that that's we have. Oh. modern day is seven point six. That's his modern that's day. That's a modern wow. day one right there Good from job, West. Man. Yeah. So if you guys want to join the Little Bowski Urban Achievers, get on it now. Uh, somebody, uh, this is <laughs> save this. I saved this one for last. This will be the last one. I promise. Uh, one out of ten, pretty bad. Only for Marky Mark fans. Said hot toasty rag. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-uh. <laughs> no? no. Okay. June 12th, 2017. <laughs> okay, let's be honest. The only reason anyone would sit through this movie is because she has a huge crush on Mark Wahlberg. That being said, I've sat through it. <laughs> rockstar is everything you'd expect in a movie about a well rock star. Wild performances, drugs, booze, blackout parties, sex, more sex, and Mark Wahlberg. I'm sure there are people who actively seek out these types of movies, but I just haven't met any. Unless you really, really adore him, you'd be better off skipping this one. Jennifer Aniston even regretted making it. (laughs) And when a star badmouths her own movie, you know it's a bad sign. If you're like me, there's no use trying to talk sense into you. Okay. I've sat through so many terrible movies, all for the love of eye candy. I understand your plight. But I've given you fair warning for this for this one because this one's pretty bad. Kitty warning. Obviously, you have control over your own children. However, due to graphic sex scenes, I wouldn't let my kids watch it. All right. Good. So, it's Tipper Gore wrote that. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Hot Toasty Rag is giving a kid's warning. Okay. Yeah, gotcha. <laughs> Sounds good. Gotcha. Thanks. That's it, guys. All right. <laughs> Well, boys, I wanted to read some of the best lyrics in rock and roll history Please. to get us pumped up for the scene by scene dissection of Rockstar. Yep. Mm. Ready? Risk my soul, test my life for my bread. Spend my time lost in space. Am I dead? Oh, let the river flow through my calloused hands and take me from my own, the eyes of the damned. It makes my stomach churn, and it tears my flesh from bone. How it turns our dreams to stone, and we all die young. Here we go. Blacked out. Yeah. Sounds like a Bible verse. Let's do it. <laughs> Scene number one. Chris Cole is a fanatical admirer of a heavy metal band called Steel Dragon. By day, Chris is a photocopier technician, and by night, he's the lead singer of, Steel, of a Steel Dragon tribute band called Blood Pollution. After band practice, they head to watch Steel Dragon play and have a fight with another rival tribute band. Soon after, Chris and his band put on a big concert that ends abruptly due to the band fighting on stage. I read all the interviews, and I did everything. At that time, the music deserved it. The music that you didn't write. The music, yeah, I thought, I thought, it, I thought it deserved it. Um, 
interesting intro and in, or kind of introduction into this, right? Where I mean, we're we're sort of being told right away that this is that this we're looking back on this. We're looking. It's back. like it's a page H one. Yeah, his, it's like yeah, it's like a behind the yeah, music behind or the whatever music. kind of thing because he looks different. He's got short hair and he's like giving an interview and you're like, oh okay. So the first time you watch it, you don't know how it ended because it could have been anyway. It could it could have just been him later on in life. But it does set up the fact that this is in the 80s, right? Yes. Yeah. Which I don't think is touched on very much at all. It does not feel like it whatsoever. Zero. N- not at all. It feels literally like a 2001 movie. And like I, I thought that from when I first watched it to like when I did it for to d- try and defend it. Yes. Mm. You know, I it really misses the mark on that. Like, I don't. I don't know what the the makeup would be as a filmmaker to like make it the 80s. Maybe just like go to the Roxy. Like, I I don't know. You find some older vehicles to get in there and they don't really even do that. Not really. The marquee that kind of like pans in, you know, even then it's like we still have that stuff. You know, the the idea that they're playing below a a, a porno theater. (laughs) Right. It's, It's a nice touch. But at the same time, it's like, yeah, but. Not really. I mean, it's got to be at this point. We got to think it's like a like a late '80s thing in my mind. Um, but I don't know. They they don't really time frame it very much. No. Did this did this movie predict or somehow was like a precursor to the tribute band revolution that has been like just completely overtaking the entire world? We're not a cover band. We're a tribute band. <laughs> <laughs> These uh, are my cables. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not in the revolution. I'm not in the, with with any of that. I I don't know. <laughs> no, because like, be, I mean, it would, are you are you asking that this movie? I don't know. It just it's, it? no. It just sort of predicted it, like oh, because because okay. back when this came out, especially in the '80s, like I don't really think there was like I don't even know if like cover bands were really even a big deal, let alone a band tributing a like first of all this is a fucking terrible business model the steel dragon is the biggest band in the world did you see on the marquee when they go to that concert they're playing three nights in a row it says it says like 17th 18th 19th steel Good dragon. God. so they're they're big enough to be playing three nights in a row in this town that then there are two rival tribute bands in the same town that are that are trying to get people to go to the show of the band that the town just saw right doing it for real and they're like but come see our show it just can't get enough it's Pits- yeah, i, I it's guess pittsburgh it's a decent size it's a big city um and they're doing three nights when and and he says you're coming to our show in a week and a half yes a week and a half but that's what i'm saying like i, I don't think back then that it was a huge deal but nowadays I think the number one most like type of band that's out there right now is tribute bands. Like people have decided that they that covering becoming another artist and playing their catalog is the number one way to like be successful and make money in music. And it is to an extent we could us three right now could be like we're going to start a Sublime tribute band and we would instantly have gigs yep. and people coming to it because because there's that shtick of like oh sublime i love sublime yeah where i think the cover band thing has gone away because the variety act has gone away because of this tribute model mm. and i don't know like back when i watched this the first time I'm like tribute what the fuck's a tribute well, band? well and, and now it's like everyone goes wow duh tribute bands and that's the thing i think we need to we define it right like define cover band define tribute band like what you want me to yeah yeah co- cover is variety like cover is covers a variety multiple act playing whatever you want to play okay and well, tribute is specifically you are acting like you're that band and you're only playing the songs from that band okay which so is what they're doing which is what blood pollution is blood doing. pollution they're is doing dressing it. just like them they're trying and to play the songs to the t black babylon yes the other band black ba- is that the name uh, yeah, of the, the other band, band is black <laughs> just don't want to make sure they don't get suckered into seeing some half-ass tribute <laughs> it's like okay okay we're battling that this is hilarious, though. All of this is extremely funny. That is that is very, very funny. But it's and not supposed to be funny. I don't think so. You don't so. think so? And no. I don't I, think them, okay. is supposed to be Them I, fighting themselves is like... Internet? Hey, okay. inter- internet gods? Mike. Um, 
like just give me like the Spider-Man meme, but it's them fighting <laughs> each other in the parking lot. <laughs> like it's like like that's what I need. That there's no way that that's not meant to be funny. That that is funny. Like them, the two guitar players, like being like, oh, yeah, don't rip yeah. it, don't hey, rip it. Hey, get get, a, get off my cape, man. Get, like let go. I don't want this torn. But I do think the tone of the movie is trying to make you be like, no. Like no, they're they are they're following their dreams and they're trying to do good and this other man's coming over here like I, I can't decide if I'm trying to put in that they're in on it or that it's actually they're taking it extremely seriously and that I just can't I, ever. Sean, I can tell you this uh, as a man that is in the cover band world, I can tell you that it's very hard for just a cover band by itself to be playing your entire life of like trying to do your own stuff and, and nobody cares. And then all of a sudden you play covers and you get on a stage where now people seem to care because they love these songs you're playing. It can very much go to your head. And I think from what I've seen, I think tribute acts are even worse because I think they legitimately start to feel like they are the fucking person that they're yeah. trying to pretend. Mm, yeah. <laughs> and and I think I think there's and sorry to anybody out there that might be in a tribute band, but I think I think it starts to slowly cross a line that the cover bands have already kind of gone to the big ego world. I think tribute bands kind of go to the next level. There is there is something to be said about being able to play it the same way. If like on like to be able to play a guitar riff the same way as a musician like Zach Wild, and be able to like play it the same way that he plays it. You, the musician insider thing is everybody's hands are different, right? Yeah, drummer's hands Tones are different. In the hands, you know, right? Tone is in the hands, like yeah. all this stuff. So there is something to be said about it. But when you're when you're so focused on it, it is like this reality of like what Chris Cole is going through. It's like you're taking this too seriously. Yeah, you're not. You don't know where you. Where you where Bobby Beer starts and you end, what like whatever it is, like there's a problem here. We we want them to come in and p to listen to our originals. Yeah, but that this is a this is a prop. This is a band problem. We've all been in bands before. These guys are not on the same page. No, no. And they've never had the conversation of what are we trying to do. They're they're advertising themselves as a Steel Dragon tribute band, but right. yet the rest of the band's like, yeah, we but we want to play our originals. And Chris is like, well, what the fuck are we doing then? Like, why are we in a tribute band? You know, and but why I do, don't you write me a song about why in the hell I would want to ever do that? <laughs> We're not there yet. I'm sorry. Not yet. Stop it. But but do, don't you agree though? Like he, Chris Cole is actually they're doing this rehearsal by the way, which is in the basement of a movie theater with zero soundproofing. So like yeah. I can't imagine watching a movie in the porn theater and hearing them yeah. rehearsing in the basement. But is there still a dragon? <laughs> 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 God damn! Yeah, can't concentrate. Uh, this movie was pretty dull until then. Damn! Just, all right. You just got a guy. You just got a guy in the back of that theater. It's just like, <laughs> he's like, he's like, oh, they they, they finally got it right. They've been practicing for weeks. Thank God they finished that up so he I can finish. He finally did the squeal enough. To <laughs> not the ping. No, that's a ping. No, raunchier. But he's but no, he's right. As, as a guy that's been in bands, all of us like he. Chris is the guy you want in your band, though. The guy that's yeah. like. That's like no, do it right. like learn it better and play it better. Like, so right? okay, I kind of have talk. to push back a little bit. Lives with his parents in a tribute band. <laughs> wants to be a singer. Wants to be the singer of his favorite band so hard he adopts his whole onstage persona. This this is decidedly not metal whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Okay, like I I I don't agree with this. Not not as metal as the movie makes it out to be. Anyway, like okay. you know, like the movie is like no, this is what you need to Look do. How cool this is. This is what you need to do. Is like I guess the movie kind of takes itself back a little bit with that argument towards the end being like, no, I, I needed to discover myself. I had to walk down a highway and hitchhike for a little bit, you know, <laughs> like it's my guitar and my gunny sack. Yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know this going your own way. There's someone who says it later, like really well, yeah. but it's, it's, it's like, this isn't the way this is almost psychotic in, in a way, like even we'll get to it, but like the nipple piercing, and everything is oh, Bobby just did it, so you gotta do no, it. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, no I have to. You are not yourself at all, man. Like, it, it, I don't know. I it, so it's I, I have issues with even Jennifer Aniston's character mm -hmm. uh, being with them because she's not with Chris. No, she's with Bobby Beers. This yeah. movie just does it does not paint an accurate picture to anyone that's maybe thinking 
that like I would like to be a rock star. It it does the opposite of like what you should fucking do. In fact, the the fact that <laughs> That's that what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Humanize the goons. The fact that humanize the goons. that they put these stupid tropes into play, right? Like yes. the fact that they teach us that yes, of course, you can he- if the singer's on stage, he can hear you singing in the crowd. I remember this conversation. Do not teach people this. I'm going to yeah. keep going on this as we go of the things that like this movie taught people the wrong things. Who cares, man? They love it. Ah! Like, <laughs> it's like, what are you doing here? It, like, I do. I really do think that there is a point where you've got to think about his bandmates. And yeah, we we love playing dragon tunes, and we were trying to get it, get people in the doors though. They're setting up their stage, you know, for their set and everything. But regardless, there is a point where the first time you watch this, you're like, no, Chris, don't listen to him. You don't listen to those guys. I love you, man, but you're mental. Like, you gotta, you got to stop this. Like, this yeah. is not okay. Your friend is literally telling you, like, as a friend, I'm telling you that there's something wrong here, okay? And we need to, we need to rectify this. Well, he says, you don't have any fantasies of your own. You yeah. sing somebody else's songs, cramp somebody else's style. Yeah. Like, Timmy Al- Tim uh, Oliphant says that yeah. to him. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, that's perfect. Like, yeah. You, I mean, even even like with the tribute band fight outside of the concert, <laughs> it's like that happens on the internet now. Oh, yeah. You know? yeah, yeah I've yeah, seen yeah. that happen locally <laughs> yes. with bands who are just like, oh, no, we're better. No, well, you you do this, cause, so that's bad. Well, yeah. nobody flyers anymore anyway, so <laughs> <laughs> that's part of the hey, problem. Hey, stop <laughs> inviting people to your Facebook event because we got our Facebook yeah. event the same night. You can't come on our post and promote your show that we're promoting our show. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you, did you see? But, like, they do love each other. Like, they are... They they are. They do seem like a good camaraderie. This band of dudes. Like oh yeah. The the act of them going to the show, which by the way, they're driving a Wayne's World car. Oh yeah. Oh, that's yeah. a Mirthmobile that's for a sure. Mirthmobile for sure. hundred percent. Like that is a Mirthmobile. And and like I do love that. I I do like some of these outlying characters. Like I think upon this rewatch, like Izzy's the one I like the least amount in mm. this entire movie. Oh like, yeah. Like even his his parents. Uh, you know, we're we're getting a little home life scene. Like, did you recognize his mom from a movie that we've done? Uh, yeah, she's yes. been in so many things. Um, oh, One particular man. role that stands out for me in this, uh, her name's Beth Grant. She was fucking Helen in Speed, that bitch. Helen. Yeah. Bitch-ass yes, Helen yes. that's like, oh, Helen, I want to get off the bus. And she dies and gets run over by the yeah. bus. Helen, you Helen. look like a Helen. You look like a Helen. <laughs> <laughs> she's great, and I, I love his dad in yeah, this movie, how supportive a, he is. He's been oh, in yeah. a bunch of movies we've done, too. I, uh, Michael Seamus Wiles. He's um, he yeah, just he's is such a cool character that that just cool dad that's like hey man like that's my son and like uh, I'm gonna go check out his shows and I'm gonna support him and yeah and he, he even like when the brother uh, by the way the wedding brother, singer Glenn from the fucking wedding singer oh yeah dude, dude. perfect on perfect casting well it had to have been around the same time right wedding singer was wedding what? singer was oh geez had what to been early two thousands that was a that was a two thousand movie. 2000? I think that was year 2000. 98, boys. Oh, 98. Oh, wow. Holy cow. My so, bad. so a little bit after. But that's, I mean, even when the brother's coming over and giving him shit, like the dad's still like, love you, son. You know, like, yeah. like kept being very supportive. And, and honestly, do you want to humanize the goons here? I'm here to do it. Can we start with the brother? Like the brother's, yeah, the brother's trying to, in a mean way, help out Chris here. Right. Like, it's bro. like, you need to, you need to get. The, he's the one who says like you don't have any fantasies yes. of your own. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah and, that was who said it, right? And and it's like, yeah, you need to like grow up because how old we have to assume like how old is Chris? He's we don't know. Early twenties. Early, yeah, early twenties. He's got to be right. You yeah. know, like he should be, he should could like be out on his own, but he's not. You know, he's and he's got kind of his copier job, copier repair job or whatever. So yeah, his brother is literally trying to tell him like. Get off of this whole thing and start figuring out your life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? But he's just being a dick about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's doing it the wrong way. Get him yeah. out of my room, mom. I'm serious. <laughs> mom. Um, like, no, you're right, though. I like that whole conversation where it's just like, yeah, you need to find yourself. This is a good starting point. Yeah. This is a perfect starting point. Like, you yeah. like metal music, you like Steel Dragon. Go out and find yourself you got, through that. Don't be Bobby Beers. You got some buddies that you seem to really get along with that are pretty good at writing music. Maybe yeah. you guys should do that. <laughs> yeah. And then it's it, super weird. Yeah, I mean, on, like at, towards the end, it reverts back to that. I you know. know it's, it, 
I don't know. It, it I, I, like even to further further this is, is like my room. She's like my roommates went to see Wham. I was like, oh, George Michael is so lame. You're getting your nipple pierced because <laughs> your idols get got his yeah. nipple pierced. I'm gonna give it That's so much crap for that. That's the fucking lamest shit I've ever heard yes. in my life, dude. Yeah. But that is that is the beauty of of like you, th- dude. This just happens in music. This happens in so many things where you just think. Whatever you like is the coolest fucking thing in the world. Like like sports dudes making fun of like theater kids. Yeah. Like you're both doing the same thing. You're both obsessing over something. Yeah. You're both fucking nerds. Yes. That's it. That's the end all be all is like just because you're into sports doesn't mean anything else other than you're a different type of nerd, bro. It's like bike gangs, uh, like, you know, in Sons of Anarchy yeah. stuff being yeah. like, be like, we're so tough, but we also have these outfits oh. and we have this little <laughs> patch here. Yeah. And if you don't have this patch, that means this. We got, kick your ass. And you have to wear this patch. <laughs> I got this this pin during my pledge because I was doing a really good job yeah. at uh, cleaning up the bathroom. Yeah. Oh, that was pretty cool. Yeah. I got this one. This is my 50th hit of heroin. <laughs> nice. The boys, oh, watch wow. me do that. That's this is this one's this one's for the guy that I killed, but I didn't mean to kill him. But you it get just a pin means, for that. Yeah, yeah. No. I'm just dude. Our outfits are so cool because we're in a band. <laughs> it's but it's we're loving. Tough. It's we're loving tough. what you like, and sometimes we've all probably gone through that. When I was learning how to play the drums, yeah, I was obsessed with it. Like, yeah, to where that is all I did, and and you can fall into those traps if if you just want this so bad, you can just. That's all you see. That's what this show's about. I mean, we say it all the time. It's like loving what you love. Yes. Like, don't ever, don't ever let anybody tell you that that what you love is bad. You know, defend it to the death, but don't go so deep <laughs> into it to where you know you become an internet troll yes. and that's oh, that's your whole personality. Yes. That's yeah. it. Yeah. You, you've there. There's a there's a point where it does become too much for. I don't know. Like this this whole instance of them getting in the fight and and they're willing to. The, the I know I know that they're they're rival tribute bands. Okay, I get that, but they all love the same thing. Yeah, deep down, they're fighting about loving the same thing and who loves it more. Almost yeah. in a sense, which is the most ridiculous argument. Yes. Yeah, which is like anybody that comments on our thing, that's what's happening. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah, well, I Sorry, love it more. No, I love it more. I love John Hughes more than you love John Hughes. No, yeah. you don't. I love John Hughes more. Name three movies. <laughs> Name three Steel Dragon songs. Oh uh, yeah, well if you uh, love him so much, could, can anybody? And that's uh, that's another super funny moment. Can anybody honestly remember a time that Bobby uh, Bobby Beers ever wore a jacket with red lapels? lapels. <laughs> no, I can't, Chris. No, I can't. <laughs> oh man, you are fucking nerds. Yes, that's it. You're exactly right, but you're hiding behind the glam of like cool heavy tough metal. guy, tough metal. guy heavy metal. Yeah. yeah, it's that's why you bring up the point, AJ. Of like, I don't know if this movie's in on this being fucking ridiculous or not. Yeah, I really can't I don't tell. know, man. And, and that's why I think it's okay or okay in my mind. I justify it in my mind liking it enough. Yeah, because. Either it is or it isn't. It's still really funny and fun. You get into this concert that they put on. Yeah. yeah. And this is fucking... Rid- this is just ridiculous. The fact that they, they're they not even a, like a band, a, a popular band yet. They're just a tribute band. They have roadies. Oh, yeah. They, they have, have a, a little ki- a little kid doing pyro. By the way, did you catch that? The, this nice. kid's yeah. like putting... He's just like a teenager. He's like 14. And like this is a band that no one knows. They definitely do not have roadies. They don't have people setting up their show while people are coming in. Notice how they're like putting the symbols on while the crowd's there. Yeah, Yeah, like they're all rolling. It's like there's this point of like let's get the let's get the vibe across. But there is a point of like now we've all been to concerts. You're crossing the line of like, come on, the setup of this whole entire show. (laughs) It's like a mini Steel Dragon set, like yes. a stage set, yeah. because they have like the little staircase. The thing Iron Workers yeah. made it for them. The, uh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. We want to thank the guys <laughs> giving us their place to have this concert. Yeah. I think, honestly, the most unrealistic thing of it is is probably the how big the crowd is. Yes. As you mentioned before, there was already three nights of this at an arena yes. in Pittsburgh. And the real band. That's really The real good. band, who's who's great who made the thing that you're watching correct and someone and and all those people had to say beyond the point of like well i know i know some of the guys in the band so i'm gonna go and support them yeah there was a lot more people than just that in that crowd yes it's a lot of people who said 
Man, that Steel Dragon concert was so awesome. Oh, dude, let's go see a lesser version of that <laughs> like, next week Outside. and a half. In a week and a half. <laughs> it's like seeing, you know, uh, the uh, Folgers coffee or Great Value coffee. Yeah. Saying, well, I already had that last week. They're out of that. So I Great had, Value it is. Yeah, I had that last week and they're gone now. So I'm going to go <laughs> get my fix with this. But like you, you mentioned like the whole stage crew and setup and everything like that. I imagine it being like just volunteers who are who Maybe. like these guys. Like I'm sure you've had people who's like, I, I'm down to help Can out help whenever you need. Out? But but you also being a musician know that yeah, like if somebody if if somebody's like, hey dude. Like I'd really like to come work for you for the next show, man. Um, can I can I set up your guitar and stuff for you? And you could be like, oh, that'd be really great. And then you realize this person knows nothing about setting up guitars, sure. and so you're <laughs> not going to let them do it because you're like, well, I'm just going to do it and I'm just going to set it up because you don't that know what you're doing. Plug fucker back in. <laughs> well, and then it's another it's another thing. They literally are casually having a conversation <laughs> yes. on stage in front of walls of amps in the middle of a song. What are we teaching people here? There's no solo after the first verse, <laughs> after the chorus. They're like quietly talking to them. Like, hey, man, what's yeah. up with that? Why'd you do that? Hey, dude. Hey, uh, hey. why did you do that? While he's, oh, well, I just didn't think it was that big of a deal. I just <laughs> yeah, thought he was like, yeah. <laughs> anyway. Anyhow. So. <laughs> dude, and, then, and then he's like, that's not how the song goes. If you don't take it seriously, you don't deserve to play it. <laughs> he's a bitch. <laughs> He's he kind really of is a bitch. He's he really kind of a is. grump about this whole thing. It's and like, dude, we're it's like right now. By the way, like you're the one causing this problem. Yeah, well, you are the one who could be the be the person who says after the show because he did this. this. Hey, now we're going to talk about this. Not right there on the stage. The, it was <laughs> his fault, not the other guy. He goes, "Don't ruin not this Robert. concert." Yeah, and he then breaks his guitar amp. Yeah. with his mic stand, which, which by the way, ruins the concert. You've already Marshals ruined are, your performance. Do not ruin mine. Marshals are pretty tough. It would have just maybe dinged it up a yeah. little bit. Like the, the the structure of it would have just been like cracked a little bit. It would have still played. I mean, it come wouldn't on. have been. You know, it wouldn't have been that bad. And you know, it wouldn't have sparked out like that. What the hell? What <laughs> no. the hell, man? I don't know. <laughs> well, let's go on to scene two. We're so washed up. We're washed up. <laughs> The next day, Chris goes to rehearsal, but he finds out he's been replaced by his arch rival. Chris then receives an unexpected phone call from Steel Dragon's founder and rhythm guitarist, Kurt Cuddy, and is offered an audition for the band. He flies to L.A., meets the band, auditions, and is offered the gig. His name is changed to Izzy, and his first performance with the band is a huge success. Did you catch the names on the marquee? Of the sex? Of the porn? Uh, yes, I, ke I kept... Uh because they, they're there. It's the same it's movies very, for the first time. Yeah, too. it's very. It's a slow. So the three na the three names of the movies were all that jizz, <laughs> das booty, das booty, and my favorite rear. Yeah. <laughs> I just thought you'd want to know those. I made sure to pause it and write them down. All that jizz. All that jizz. All we, that now, jizz. we now return to all that jizz. Jizz that's hands. Actually, jizz hands. That's actually fucking fantastic. Yes, it is. <laughs> Somebody, that. So that was someone's job. Be like, dude, yeah. come up with some weird porn names and put yeah. them on the marquee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. And then <laughs> all right. there's also that's somebody else. That's else's. a music movie, too, by the way. And, you know, and this would obviously be Cockstar. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It was also somebody's <laughs> job to be able to get like get up there and put those letters <laughs> yeah. up on the While market. people are in town <laughs> going, what the fuck? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> Don't you need an A? No, I need an I. <laughs> I need an I. Yeah, we ran out of A's. So I <laughs> no, this is what Tim of the Oliphant's character says. Like, Wouldn't you rather fail as yourself than some Bobby Beers clone? <laughs> like, that's <laughs> that's actually kind of profound. You well, know? I don't know, Sean. Maybe you could write me a song about why in the hell I would ever want to do, do that. that. <laughs> it's the best line in the movie. Yeah. I laugh so fucking hard. It's it's great. <laughs> but I think they are. This is where I'm confused, Sean. And this is where maybe you can help. I think they want you to like Chris a lot and to be like, yeah, the band just doesn't understand. They don't get it. They don't. But like, but I don't. I I fucking hate him. Like, of course he's getting replaced at this practice. Like. He he they're making the right choice. They're saying the right things to him, like Sean just said, but he just doesn't get it. I and, know. But but the movie wants us to be like, yeah, do it, Chris. Well, let's it's go. The, it's the refuse line. Rather be forgotten than remembered for giving in. You know, yep. like that. I kind of take that strangely, maybe overly obsessed with that idea. I could admit about myself to uh, to very uh, true fruition for, for in my life. Like I'd rather fail at doing what I am than, you know, succeed at doing something that I'm not, you know? 
and there's also this, I, I kind of made mention of it last week, but there is a point where sometimes the best people, and they say, well, all the talent that was in this room just left left the room or whatever. He might be the most talented person in that band. He might be very dedicated, and but in the end, your top person or whoever this is could be the most toxic person in the room who's causing a lot of animosity if they're not careful about how they're you know, putting themselves out there. And so if all he's doing is you don't deserve to be here because you're not doing it my way, then you deserve to be replaced. Yeah. You're completely inflexible. You have no, like there's no give. You don't want to write music with us. We want, we all want to write music. We're all on the same page. We want to write music. You don't want to do this. Mm -hmm. Like, but like all, all you care about is playing dragons tunes. And it's like, how long are we going to keep this up then? Right. It's only so long that the band's only going to last. So the yeah. are the, you know, the, what we're getting sucking at the teat at is only going to be, uh, fruitful for so many years. Correct. You know, they're going to dry up, you know? So what are we going to do next? Like, let's do our own fucking thing. For, yeah. for people that are not in bands, there's, there's two really important factors when trying to find bandmates. One, skill level yeah. of like how good they are and to hang yeah yep. like how good the hang is and <laughs> he nine, sucks <laughs> nine times out of ten the hang is the most important yeah it's thing. way more important that we can we can work with you on the talent thing. yeah we like, can you, you can fail your way through this and we will help you but I, if you're cool as shit to hang out with that's all that i'm the least talented member in my band and like Same but here. i'm a, but i'm a good hang and i i can offer other qualities and and the thing is is that Chris clearly is talented, like yeah, holy very shit. Much so. and that's why he was in this band in the first place. But they broke that cardinal rule. Of also, the hang is so important. Yep, and they're realizing this. And it seems like it seems like whenever it's outside of, we saw that when they went to the concert. Outside of anything really with the band, they were great friends. Yes, true. But then the moment that you got back into that, you know, on the, onto the stage or into the practice room, it was not. It was you, not good. You make our good time. Our, our work are working towards a good time because the work is everything leading up to the show yeah. when you're in a band pretty much you know you're making that a bad time and so and that's the majority of the time yes right <laughs> you very rarely are on stage it's it's all the other stuff instead it's it's and uh, it's the unfortunate like the replacement thing that happens in this moment too. Isn't that the lead it's singer Stephen Jenkins third, third eye blind third eye blind yeah, and I love him so much wait where so the replacement, the rival singer of the tribute bands, the one that replaces them, that's Stephen Jenkins from Third Eye Blind. Is it really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's cool. One of my favorite dudes of all time. Like he plays that so well. Damn. He does, he does that's such. I saw he was an actor. Yeah. Nope. He does such. I think he does such a good do job. He reminds me honestly. He reminds me of Trey Parker in like basketball <laughs> to some degree. <laughs> Like I'm just looking at him. I'm like oh, I can see Trey that. Parker. Like anybody, anybody. <laughs> and I'm looking that. around an empty room. I'm like I'll just live with this by myself. <laughs> and so, but it's like you see this. He brought a new PA with him, and this is a new mixing see? board. So he's bringing other qualities. It's like have you heard the voice he brought with him? <laughs> it's exactly what you just said. Yes. Like it's like it doesn't matter. It's like it doesn't, it, it matter, doesn't matter because matter. as long as we can like move forward and do what we want to do collectively. It doesn't matter. That's fine, guys. I'll get you guys some more cables. <laughs> like, does this guy work at a guitar center? He definitely like, does. He from the guitar, guitar center. center. He definitely does. It's fine, guys. I'll just I'll just get some when I go to work next time at guitar center. I'll talk to my Robbie, my manager Robbie. <laughs> yeah, he'll just give my, me some. My He'll Sweetwater rep is gonna hook me up. With yeah. That. yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll don't worry, guys. It, like it'll be fine because I'll just let him see if he wants to sponsor our next gig. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We do need to mention all the unbelievable famous musicians that are in this. Please right? and thank you. So first of all, when he, when he arrives for the audition, uh, there's a, a person leaving the booth. Yeah, I thought that's who you were talking about. No, no, no. So that is the, the singer for Steel Panther that's in real right. life is it right really? now. The okay. one leaving the booth. Um, the musicians in Steel Dragon themselves, uh, Jason Bonham is the drummer, yep. the son of John Bonham. Jeff Pilson is the bass player. He's the bassist for Dokken. Do and yeah. then obviously Zach Wilde, the guitar for so many projects. The musicians in Blood Pollution, his Chris's original band, uh, Blaze uh, Elias is the drummer for Slaughter. 
Brian Vander Ark is the singer for the Verve Pipe. Oh yeah, he, he plays oh. bass, which bass we'll get player. to later. It, it's yeah, we'll get to that later. Uh, Nick uh, Can- 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 Cannonese is the guitarist for Black Label Society, and then mm. Stephen Jenkins is the singer there for Third is. Eye Blind. Yes. Wow. he's the replacement f- for that. So like, just an un- I, and I love that they made those choices. Give me yeah. real musicians. That's one of the best choices they did. Yeah, I mean like even to, I guess bring it back to. Uh, the trial is like they did do their due yes. due diligence on this and be like, yeah. okay, so here's here's the story. Is it even a little bit accurate? And so for them to be in the movie, it's it's the most important bit. part. We need the musicians to yeah. look good on stage. You need you that's need true. Them. That's another point. Yes, you, yeah. You need them to be to be like musicians on stage because musicians know how to be on a stage. We can't teach an actor how to be a musician, but we can teach a musician how to say a couple lines. The same thing as the martial arts. Martial arts, yes. Yes. That's what it was. Yes, we say it all the time, too. Like, we hate when we see, like... Uh, movie scenes with bands on stage and they're just not it's <laughs> definitely not hitting a crash Shit's not at that plugged point in. yeah like it's not plugged in <laughs> they aren't even putting their hands in the right place it's one of those niche things that if you're a musician but you your your eyes are drawn to it immediately yeah. or even if you just know how music is played you yeah, know i you, mean generally you, go to a yeah. lot of, you know smart people out there will know just like it's very it's that much more immersive if right. they have these people in there you know? and and i think they did a great job of doing that and you 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 do end up really appreciating it because, and I think it's hilarious that you have like Zach Wilde who is notoriously bearded and they had him shave. <laughs> he actually shaved for this movie. So oh, good. he did. Okay. Oh yeah. And it, I mean, I, I think that's hilarious. It's so weird. Um, it's a very <laughs> strange thing. He's got some great funny lines later on. I honestly always thought though, that the guy who was walking out of the booth was supposed to be um, uh, like uh, David Lee Roth or something. Mm. Oh, you know what I mean? Cause the way he's, he sounds in that booth, he sounds like David Lee Roth. Yeah. hundred um, percent. But the this is actually one of my favorite scenes in the movie is when he's doing the rehearsal. Or yeah. like The he, audition. The audition. Yeah. Um, I love it so much. And of course you're going to, bef- just right before that, who is this? It's Kirk Cuddy. Hang up. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> There's no way you're going to buy he that. Gets, he gets that phone call once a week. Yeah. From somebody like, it's Kirk Cuddy. <laughs> He's, well, I Probably from Third Eye Blind Guy. Probably, yeah. I, I don't... <laughs> <laughs> he definitely does. Can we just think, like, sit and think? I mean, we've talked about prank phone calls before, <laughs> but like, it's it's the same thing. It's like, hey, let's call up Chris Cole again. Oh, we should. Dude, His yeah. mom will probably answer first. Oh my god, it's so funny every time they fucking answer. <laughs> hey, oh, hey, this is Cut Cut. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> no, it's not. Either. No, it's not. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> it it is a while. Like he he gets the phone call. The they they get on the flight. They David. meet up with Tanya. The hello, I'm the cryptic, overly sexual liaison. Into welcome into your new life. Yes, <laughs> you know, I just oh. it's that's that cliche. Yes. you know. Tell there's a ticket waiting for you. Make sure you tell no one about this. Okay. Oh yeah, no no problem. Good lad. You're not gonna believe this, Em. <laughs> like, You're coming with me. Yeah. Oh, we we traded in the first class ticket for two. It's like, how resourceful. It's like, well, I guess. I mean, I thought so. Yeah. Listen, listen. If if I got called up right now to to go rehearse for Deftones and and be the, like a replacement drummer, and there was a first class ticket waiting for me, I'd be like, Molly, I'll be back. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I'm going to do this. And you're not coming with this. me. <laughs> you're not coming with but me. But I'm your manager. No, you're no, not. You're not. <laughs> no, you're, no, no, you're, not. you're my piercer slash manager. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're my you're my nipple piercer. All right. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you what, though. The one thing about I I don't know how I feel about Mark Wahl- Wahlberg. Sometimes, like it's it's a very hard thing for me to. Sometimes I'm just like God, I love you, and sometimes I'm like fuck. Yeah. But in this movie, I think they made a really good choice because I truthfully believe that he is singing these songs. Yeah. I thought he was honestly up until I, you know, finally did the research on it. My um, fiance was like, "Is that him singing?" Yeah, I mean, it's it's a good casting too yes. because he's obviously we've known him to be in a band. Yes, you know? yeah, and he just looks. He did the he did the work to know these songs inside and out. When yeah. he's in the booth singing, you're like, "Oh yeah, yeah, he's, that's he's that's him, right?" Mm-hmm. Like, the, is he singing? I I, you buy it just about every single time he's doing any sort of a performance. He did the he did the research. He was going up and down, you know, the L.A. boulevards and the 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 venues, and he was hanging out with, uh, you know, he knew some of these musicians, and that was part of his research. And he looks like a front man. 
Yeah. You know, he he looks like a front man uh, for a metal band. Like, I think he does a good job um, being that guy. Even just like the banter on stage, too, where it's, some of it's pretty lame. But like, so, like even like, so, I love you. I love you, too. And then he gets right back to like, to like his spiel about like what the song is about or yeah. some shit. You know, it's it's very convincing. I do like it. Yeah. I, I just think like when we when we get to see him in that in that audition and really see him tossed into tossed into the mix right of he's around now all the guys that he's revered for so long even walking up into it all the memorabilia it looks like it looks yeah. like the rock and roll hall of fame in yeah. there like a hard it's rock amazing. cafe um you know a good one <laughs> um <laughs> But <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Ooh, a subtle dig. At wow, the I've been to some of your shoddy. Ones. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm never going. Hard Rock no. Casino Branson. Branson. Yeah. Every time we 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 finish an episode, he just goes off. You let me down, <laughs> Hard Rock Branson. People always ask what happens after the episode, and it's AJ. It's mostly ranting me about ranting hard. about Hard Rock cafes <laughs> and Hollywood, <laughs> Hollywood cafe or whatever. Uh, no, but like they're they're going through this and they're still like in this like uh, starstruck mode, mm-hmm. and then they finally get in there and there's your idols. He's, he, there they are, and you 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 immediately have to like perform for them, especially after that whole thing that goes around. Yep. you guys are kicking me out of the <laughs> it's band. The same thing oh, that he yeah. just did. Yeah, like he just was the fucking weirdo quitting the band and keeping his stuff. Yeah, and then now he witnesses it happening to someone else. Are, My are scarf. They? Are they kicking him Take out because he's gay? I don't know. No, I think I, it seems to be the only I, reason. Actually, no, 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 because um, I think they knew it. They're like, we don't give a fuck. Like yeah. they even, they're kind of like, we don't care about that. And he even talks about the the lyrics. You think? Do you think the lyrics were yeah. about a woman? Yeah. I, yeah. I think there must have been some creative differences or something, okay. or, or he I, was mad about something. I feel like there was something because they're like, don't come near me, you know that kind of shit. Yeah, it just seemed like they knew about it. Though, yeah, didn't they? It, it seemed like it was like this fed up thing, and they're gonna kind of take their digs at him now. At this point, mm. you don't and not know the sexuality of your band members. Yeah, I guess, especially <laughs> when, in a when band you're on a tour <laughs> like that. I mean, like you're you're gonna you're gonna figure it out one way or the other. It's like there's a lot of guys going into Bobby's room. <laughs> Huh, he must be oh. having like a fun like powwow yeah, thing. Maybe, maybe you know? they're doing a podcast. Yeah, maybe like they're <laughs> podcasting in there. Singing some songs. Yeah, I mean, four four guys in a room, you know, just closed doors, locked doors. <laughs> That's what we're doing right now. It kind of up to up the lighting a, a little bit. It's very know? loud in there. Man, oh, yeah, wow. they're, they're laughing a lot. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's all we're doing in here. Uh but I I don't think that that's it. I feel like they they made mention of it basically his his he was like falling off the yeah. train, basically, okay. is what it is, and and he gives that very real like, well, you think it's just all sex, drugs, and rock and roll? Well, you got the sex wrong, didn't you? You got he's like, drugs, I never touch them. He's like, and he's in bed like, like by eleven yep. o'clock. If you, nobody does a performance like me, like not even at your age. Like people do not realize You're right. that. Yeah, You're right. They were all into that. He yeah. wasn't. That's yeah. probably why he's gone. Yeah. So there's like you say, there's just this difference that's happening, and it. It, it wouldn't that be like a shock and awe thing though? Like that is the guy that you've been emulating, and he, and not he's even not just even Steel real. Dragon. He's not even real. Like to see the guy you want to be, True. he's not even the real. He's not even a real guy. He's not even a real guy. He's got a wig on. Yeah, he pulls that wig off, and that is the idea of the stripping of the persona. That should have been the moment where Chris was like, "Okay, wait, I've been going about this wrong." But yeah. Instead, he's like, "No, I'll step in that booth." Yeah. And don't you think if you're if you're the biggest band in the world. That you're gonna need more than thirty seconds from a singer to determine if they're the new member. Oh no, dude! I I saw the tape that those uh, the two girls I've been banging. Uh, they just brought that tape. They just want to make sure that you could actually. Do and it. yeah, they were just wanted to see it. Like I watched a lot of that tape before they got in yeah, the fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So cool. or like you said, yeah, like maybe go to the bar and hang out. Maybe get a hang. <laughs> yeah, maybe do just a get little a little hang. hang, dude. Yeah, because I think that's like the checklist, right? It's like, can he do it? All right, he can do it. Uh, is so he cool? Check one. 
All right, now we have to do step two. That is, uh, we have to go hang out at the bar for like two hours. Oh, I got an idea too. Hey, while we're hanging out with him, let's say the hangout goes good. Yeah. Let's bring him up to speed on how this band works as a hierarchy. Oh, okay. And so that he understands that he's just a hired gun. Right. Because we write the. Like we yeah. So I hope you know when you join this band is like there's not going to be any any of your lyrics are not going in this. We don't care what you have to say. Like literally what you've been doing. I just want to make sure what you've been doing in your tribute band is exactly what you're going to be doing. Doing in this oh. band, just want you to know. So if you ever get any other ideas about that, yeah, uh, don't. So okay. don't have them. So I hope I hope you don't lose like the the I hope you don't lose the heart in what you were doing because that's all we're doing here. And Bobby Beers is just a character, as you just saw. Yep. yep. Okay. We good? We good with that? All right, great man. Then right, come cool. on tour with us. <laughs> <laughs> nope. All Except right. They're like, want to do it? Yeah. News conference. Also, yeah. also like I, I, I like the subtle thing of uh, their manager. What's his name? By Matt. 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 He, uh, wonderful actor, by the way. Yeah, Timothy Spall. Yeah. He's uh, one of my favorites. Yeah. Father this is of first... Rafe Spall. Oh, is that his? Wow. Is that his yeah. father? Yeah. Okay, that's his dad. No this shit. Okay. First film he's been in that we've done, and okay. he's one of my favorites. She's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So good. Uh, I love the subtle thing he like slides over the whiskey to <laughs> You're gonna uh, need this. Jennifer Aniston, where it's like just sliding the, the like the potion or like the elixir of like. You know, this is rock and roll. The this is rock of and rock, roll in man. a glass. Like this is your life's gonna change if you if you drink any of this. And Izzy is gonna drink some of this and you're not. It's kind of kind of a little She doesn't take a drink, thing. does she? No, she, she doesn't take a she drink. She looks at, that at point. it and looks back up at him, you know. She's she's very focused on Chris and doing that thing, and they do. They have that moment. He looks back through and it's like the support of her. Tis my life. <laughs> In my for my bread. bread, bread. It's breath. It's no, breath. It says, it says bread. It's breath. It says bread. <laughs> this, I, there's I, no way it's okay, bread. Okay, ready? What's no the name of that song? Bread. I don't test, fucking know. Test my life. <laughs> test. Song lyrics. You don't listen to him every single no, day like Mike does. Gucci man. That's a Gucci life. man song. Oh my <laughs> Hold on. breath. Uh, the, <laughs> the closed caption said breath when I was watching it. Maybe that was the standard <laughs> definition that you watched. We all die young. Okay, ready? We all die young. I pulled this off online. Look, honestly, I dig the song. All right? No, you it's don't. It's not bad. I'm sorry. It's not I bad. do like it. No, you don't. I got goosebumps. <laughs> okay. So, I, have, I hey, got goosebumps. Hey, you ready? Pimples. Okay. We all die young by Miljelenko Zmatsvlizis. Yeah. Is the one that wrote this. It says, risk my soul, test my life for my bread. No, nope. <laughs> it's, it's breath. On I'll find. I'll take a screen cap of this. Even okay, <laughs> Steel Dragon. We all die young. Yeah, risk my soul, test my life for my bread. Yep. Yeah, well, they're still wrong. <laughs> that, yeah, I'm, no. gonna, I'm going by the movie. None of that's <laughs> right. <laughs> nah. That's that's my own little tribute. You, gotta, you to know what? That. You gotta get that bread. Yeah, that that's money. what I'm saying. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, in in the press conference, like, can you actually hit all the notes of Bobby Beer Scan? Yeah. Oh yeah, stand up and shout. I love the pan of like everybody, and it's just like okay, and like I want They're to like, like okay, okay. <laughs> everyone <laughs> there, right. everyone there is like in the actual press conference is like, Ugh, Ugh. are we really doing that? Like he doesn't. The, there's no, there's no extra stuff on that microphone. There's always a little bit of reverb, yes. some slap, vocal slap back. There's something that's being fed into that line. You don't want to do that. You're doing that into a very, very cheap like reporter's microphone. Yep. And that thing is just crackling the hell out. It's it's breaking, it's peaking, all that. The whole pan shot though of all his old bandmates and all those people and then like the one guy. But then you do see and this is one another thing that I actually really like is he gets t- Timothy Oliphant and he gets that little smirk on his face mm-hmm. because he knows <sighs> he kind of knows he's like, "You know what? That's where he belongs." Yeah. He he knows how talented his friend is. And it's like, it wasn't going to work here, but y- you know what? That's where you belong, and it's like you deserve what you get, good or bad, mm-hmm. in my mind. I, I agree know. with you. I agree I agree with you, but I'm also like, yeah, that's kind of cheesy. The like, smirk? That, like, that, it's too soon. Maybe in like a couple of years you can get over this and go, yeah, you know, that, was, that was pretty well, cool. Well, he never had a problem with him. It's just like... I had a problem with you just being... Bobby Beers yeah. in our band. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's it. Well, clearly, yeah. they stay friends, obviously, you know. Well, let's move on to I scene three. They, <coughs> they get back. Scene yeah. three. So, after the gig, Izzy and his girlfriend Emily begin to experience the wildness of the rock star life. The tour begins and it takes a toll on Emily, where she eventually leaves Chris to move to Seattle. The tour continues, and when it arrives in Seattle, Emily is disappointed to see that Izzy is wasted and cheating on her. Okay, so one more thing about the press conference. Why is he going in and out of his accent? He keeps forgetting it. 
but then it's like but, he's not good. But then at, he yeah. never does an accent the rest of the movie. Yeah, it's never addressed like in any press things or anything they do. Like sometimes he goes in and out of it on stage. Even I don't that trip me the fuck up. Yeah, I like, don't know. How about we just don't? How about we just be like, yeah, Izzy's from America. Yeah, yeah. Why did we have to find him from like England? By the way. Um, Jeff Pilson throughout the entire movie doesn't have an English accent. Oh, no. Zach Wilde doesn't have an English accent. We don't care. We don't care that they don't have English accents. Why did it have to be a thing that he Izzy has to have an English accent? Yeah, it's like Izzy's revenge. It's like no, just stop. I ate a lot of pussy. Uh, it's because we needed that. I ate a lot of pussy. I ate a lot of pussy. The same kind of scene that he has yeah. in Boogie Nights of mm-hmm. him p- pumping himself up. That's all I do, man. Morning, noon, did not, and did <laughs> It's like, I just see y'all pussy. I Get like, in here and do it or <laughs> shut the fuck up. <laughs> I know. That's such a great moment between the two of them. Um, Can we talk about this uh, this club scene? Yeah. Like, sure. Listen, you know, like. Private stri- party, but everyone's in. Well, they do the concert and he follows and yeah, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, yeah, okay. Whatever. Cool. All right. Whatever. So anyway, uh, Stranglehold obviously is one of my faves. Love you know, like song. when you get that in a movie, you're like, mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh yeah, this is gonna be fucking cool. I, yeah. I this is five minutes. This is five minutes of Mark Wahlberg giving us the worst on-screen kisses, kisses <laughs> I've ever seen in my life. Dude, I can't. I was waiting because his parents are there. I was waiting for his his like mom to be behind him, and like he turns around, I was like, oh, <laughs> what's up, mama? I was like, oh, 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 <laughs> oh Jesus! <laughs> I just, well, you know, rock and roll, man. Uh, Whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I like. I fucking hate this scene. <laughs> I, I just like I I was so bored. There was nothing cool about this scene at all. Of just them like making out and just everyone in the room wants to fuck you. It's like, <sighs> yeah. Like, it just was like it just bored the fuck out of me. It, it is a it's it's and he's a disgusting kisser on screen. Like yeah, it's so gross. Yeah, I, I think you, you could be right about that. the The big thing is 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 the tossed into the into the star life, you know, like yeah. we, yeah, sure. We were there for a second, but now we're really into it. And like after your first show blows the roof off. Right. And but that fall, it's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. Can it's we, very funny. Just got to make mention the fall is the fall is hilarious. Like he got out that gaff. So yeah. nothing else can go wrong. Yeah, exactly. Once, once you get one thing out of the way, yeah. like you're fine for the rest of life. Again, we've, you've got Matt's who's there. He's like, you're okay. All right, he's just like <laughs> I haven't lost a man yet, like that kind of thing, right? He's kind of taking the roadies are going to run out. Tell him no. Nope. Yeah, I know he kind of has that moment, nope. and I haven't lost a man yet. It's it's this thing about Matt's that you don't know if he's like whose side he's on. You know what I mean? But in the end, I think he is really on Chris's you side. You figure it out. Yeah. You kind of figure out he really is kind of looking out for him. He is trying to give him the space he needs mm-hmm. to to be able to do what he needs. Like he fell, but don't help him up because we don't want to pull this out. They do the great musician thing, which again, musicians on stage, hey, run it back, kind of start in, in yeah. the chorus, you know, let's do that. That whole thing is great. A great moment. I got to piss before I go on stage. I love all this, honestly, this anxiety before the first big set mm-hmm. and the first big show. You get to you get that shot of him riding up the elevator yeah. to like turning around to a giant crowd, that one kind of thing like that. We get to experience that with him. You you see that in, you know, that that's the thing that happens. I think people there's a there's a moment that happens for people when they are going to go do a performance and they're about to when he gets onto that elevator and as he starts to rise up, you can kind of see that scaredness drop away from him. And yeah. then you see the, his face and he's like, like that kind of thing. I'm okay, in it now. Now I'm in it. Uh, do, do you, did you guys ever watch the Katy Perry documentary? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Kind of a similar thing happens there. Where she's going through a really terrible breakup. It's almost like almost shot for shot. She's going to be on a lift and going up to a thing. And she's literally coming out of her dressing room. She's in full makeup. Tears are still like on her face and she does this. And then she just has this moment where she just goes, like that, and it's like this change for this persona because she's yep. about to go do it. Do you just clocked in? Thousands of people have paid to see this now, and she's got to yep. put it, put the face on, and uh, all that stuff happens. I love the moments after the show, though, and I think it's that's the moment after this, after before they go to the venue when he's really thrown into it. Like you're in the you're in the thick of it now. They're clanking all these fucking liquor bottles together, yep. and I think it's I think it's a good option to just that they get to see this crazy lifestyle now i totally agree with you and but like 
after when they are in the clubs like all right now you played your first steel dragon show okay mm. now uh, we have a little we have a little band initiation uh so with that yeah you've joined the band okay he's like uh oh uh oh <laughs> what do i gotta do <laughs> do i gotta kill someone uh -oh. no 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 uh, uh I, I gotta do heroin no 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 no, no, no nothing heroin. like that nothing. no i gotta suck you guys dicks and swallow all your loads then at the same time no no nothing <laughs> like that jesus christ no man we just uh <laughs> no all you gotta do is uh do the shot of tequila out of this chick's rack yep and uh, <laughs> which, that's, by the way, is going to happen every night from here on out. And by the way, this is now the normal thing. Just a little <laughs> band initiation for you. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh. Oh, and then oh, you're going to have sex with 87 people. Yeah. Tonight. yeah. And well, so, that's your own initiation. Yeah. Well, you can do whatever you, that's you want. The, the life is going to get. We you won't. At that we'll point. be over here. We're not. Yeah, doing that. that's fine. It's, <laughs> Watch it's, out for Tammy or whatever. We're <laughs> yeah. Ta Tanya. Tanya. <laughs> Tanya. I like Tanya? to think that he gets out. Like we can go into the the crazy night or whatever, but I like to think that he gets out and they get on the bus. Like, how was your guys tonight? It's like, we went to bed at nine o'clock. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we left the no, minute no. you took that tequila shot. I, to I told you, man. Like it was like. It <laughs> It's like, yeah, you're rolling with the big dogs now. And it's like he takes the shot. It's like, all right, that's super fun. What's next, guys? Like, no, we got to get to bed. Yeah, dude. no, this is. Uh, we got tour starting yeah, tomorrow. Tour literally yeah. starts tomorrow. Tour starts tomorrow. Yeah, we, have we have to nine we have hours to of driving tomorrow. So <laughs> yeah, we. Uh, it's an early night for us actually, and like everyone's like, <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought we were partying. It's like, oh no, no, not at all. Eleven thirty, like we said, <laughs> dude. Uh, I uh, the only the only one who's make it who who this is going to make uncomfortable is uh you know your girlfriend uh, -huh. uh that you've been with for well we have to assume like 10 years almost they were like high school high yeah. school something, right? or something. Yeah. yeah so that's the only person that's gonna be and it's then fine. and then it makes me feel it's like again whose side is matt's on because is matt's making a pass at emily mm. or is it just is he really trying to is he really trying to say, well, hey, you can have fun too. You might as well kind of get used to it. Gravity doesn't I think exist that's anymore. More He's it. the man. The, uh, the manager needs to make sure that she's happy and he's yeah. happy, so that yeah. the band is happy. Right. Do whatever you want. Have fun. Yeah. I'm I mean, your man. You can have fun too. It's yeah. allowed. It does seem like this whole thing seems a little rushed too, or just seems like plopped into our laps. Like right after the show, then there's like they take ecstasy or whatever the fuck it is, and they're like. Yeah, we're it's just like, gonna yeah, fuck a, other people now. That's an Advil because you're gonna need that. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> he thinks it's like Here, hard have drug. two of these. It's like you're gonna <laughs> little, little yellow little different. different. <laughs> <laughs> dude, Tony, definitely me last a night. different experience. Give you Tylenol, bro. dude. That that was elite. Like <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> no, no, I'm sure. I felt super weird after afterwards. No, you just you remember you had those tequila shots. Yeah, remember? <laughs> it's pretty normal, dude. Um, I. I it's very fun to think about that actually this whole lifestyle he's the one who made it like outlandish I, and dude, everyone else was just I like I don't think that's crazy be. at all I, yeah. think you're, I think you're almost dead on but, that's pretty but fun. no but they get into like they're showing the drummer um, Jason Bottoms basically getting a blood transfusion yeah. backstage because of how wild his yeah. life has been and like and that that I think that it's implied that they're all doing that but we're just seeing it through Izzy's eyes mm -hmm. right like I think yeah, so. No, I think so too. I think so too. I, th this is this is a wild ride that he is about to go on to. Well, and that that speech that Jason Bonham gives, like I I actually really like what he says. He says you got these birds dreaming of having it off with you. Yep. That makes the guys want to be you. The guys are the ones that buy records. So if the chicks don't want you, the guys are gone. Mm -hmm. I mean, put it this way: your job is to live the fantasy other people only dream about. Don't go don't go in half ass dream big live the life. Like I love that he's saying that while he's basically dying. Yeah. And needing a blood <laughs> transfusion and he's like it's too late now. He's looking like eat like the guys that just captured ET <laughs> again yeah. and he's all white and fucked up. Yeah. Yeah, it's I mean that's that's the thing that they're showing you live the fantasy like it's not really you just lit like pretend like it's you. Yeah. And that's again it kind of goes back thing. to the Bobby Beers yeah. thing and the persona and they're they're a tribute as it as it is, you know. Yes, they are Steel Dragon, but even the members yep. are they are literally. It, I think it's the perfect way that it could be said. Your your job is to have a fantasy life. You and if if you don't do that, then this all goes away. This is, this this isn't. Then what is this for? It's the same today for like 
um, uh, social media influencers. Right. Mm -hmm. Pretend like this is your life. Yeah. So that yeah. other people dream about it. Oh yeah. Every time I get up in the morning, I do I do my yoga routine. Yep. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Uh, I make my tea and my mm. cat's fucking here yeah. with me, uh, and then I, I I have time for a thirty minute meditation, uh, and then after that a thirty minute journaling session, I and read then after that thirty minutes of, of, of drinking coffee and water alternative. I read like my book next to my plants, my wall of plants that I have. That's yeah. not inconvenient whatsoever in no. my house. You know? Same thing. It's continued on from hair metal days to today. Yeah. yeah. It, it's same yep. thing. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> we do get a lot of live footage at this point too. And I, like my one question to you is why is Zach Wild so fucking awesome? Oh, well, like what? What is Zach it Wild. about? What it is? Let's about talk about it, brother. You know, yeah. you're not cool if you don't ha like hang on to a beer like this the whole time. You that know? just like that moment. Yeah. When they get off stage <sighs> and they're walking back to the room, and Matt's is like doing the whole like give us two minutes, close it up, like all this stuff. You see Zach Wild with two beers, just go oh. <laughs> <laughs> like they're freaking like like Viking horns that he's about to blow. Man, he just right, y'all so killed it out there, man. Yeah, 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 shot it right between the eyes, yeah, brother. <laughs> that was a fake beer. Oh, that's yeah, 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 I think mm. you know, just like this whole life. Uh, yeah, <laughs> he just shit. looks like such a badass on stage. It's yeah. something about the way he's, he's straddled. It's the strap. fucking yes. tattoos, dude. Yeah. Him on stage though, he is a monster on yes, stage. He is. When he goes up to. It, he he looks like the like the Muppet monster or something. <laughs> yes. When he goes up to uh, Chris Cole when he's After like, he fell. He's like <laughs> <laughs> that straddle <laughs> way that he holds the guitar. Oh like, yeah. He just looks like such a badass. And that's I love all this live footage. I love these montages, like getting us all the way into the Seattle thing of like just here's a montage. He's in the band. They're killing it. Rock yeah. rock to you drop. Rock rock never stop. Yeah, this is a, this is metal. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> singing about rock. Yeah, yeah. And then your whole life has changed. So you get talking heads in there. You know, you got to, you got. You do may it. find yourself <laughs> waking up in a beautiful house with a beautiful wife, and you ask yourself, "How did I get here?" Rock, rock till you drop, <laughs> and the days go by. And da, 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 rock, 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 never stop. It is. It, it's a, but but. It, that's a great montage. Mm -hmm. It though. is fun. This is a great, fun montage of them just going through him being on every magazine cover, every music, everything that and and it takes about I think I think it kind of skips uh does that time lapse about like eight or nine months, right? And it's he it only took that long for him to be almost bored with his life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like this is the norm. Not this even know what, what town he's in. I don't know what town I'm, I'm in. I don't know. Check my schedule. I don't know. I don't I know. I get a copy of it every day. Yeah. You know, and there is a point where people living that life every single day, it becomes their norm. And there's always a grass is greener scenario, always. even for those guys who are, I got to do this MTV thing. And then I got to talk to the producer about this thing that they want to do. And, mm -hmm. Oh, Did you man. realize what you just said? Yeah, it's like, <laughs> and you're saying it with such boredom in yeah. your voice. Like this, well, oh God. <laughs> I do this MTV thing. Oh, make good with them. Well, then M is like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to leave because Marcy and I are going to, we got the, we got our grant for our business. And he's like, what business? And I'm like, yeah, what business? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we never knew anything. I thought she was a manager. Yeah. Who's uh, Marcy? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're asking the questions we're all asking, Mark. Yeah. So, <laughs> There's another thing where I'm just like, yeah, I she's great in this, but we do not get enough of her. It's Marcy from across she the is, road. She is just um, the the liaison of of the you know the normal life yes. that Chris should probably come back on a little bit. She's just that. This is the last piece of his regular life that he's holding on to, and now it's gone. Yeah. Like, oh, that's well, a, yeah. she's literally an object at that point. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. She is. I mean, and we get that in insight into the wives' lives. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. The, they follow in the car, the hen house, as he calls it. Back to the hen house. Pretty you know? gross. <laughs> Pretty <laughs> fucked up. Yeah. Um, and like they're just in that car, and all of them, except for the one who must be the newest, except for Emily. Yeah. She's like, she's still stoked. But the other three sitting on the other bench, they are all just completely dejected and burnt out. Some um, of them are um, actual what? groupies in like Is that real right? life. Yeah, like I think one of them wrote a book on it. I think. Wow. I'm not, I'm not sure about that. They but. they had like famous husbands, like yeah. rock star husbands, a I couple met, playmates, I believe. Okay. Too. Yeah. Yeah. I met Goat on that bus. It's like, okay, wait a second here. <laughs> like, 
and and then like the the vodka bottle. It's like, oh no, I just had breakfast. So <laughs> they give Jennifer Aniston some of the best lines. They do. They really do. <laughs> they do. Yeah, she's she's pretty witty. In it. Yeah, but I love it, that. But yeah, like uh, we'll go a lot of places. Like Port Tornadoes will show up in Okaboji and people will be like, "Where are your wives at?" It's like, oh, they don't come anymore. No. Like they they don't want anything. It used to be so exciting that we would all go places together, like for a show, and we'll all party, and like now. It, it, that shit gets old really fast. Oh yeah, it, the, the, the day to day mundanity of traveling and playing in a band is the worst. You always got to evolve, and then it's like we talked about it last week on election. It's too like you, you got to find the next thing. You yes. got to you yes. got like you you grow up, you grow out of certain things. You know, if if you're not in it, if you're not the one who who is in it, right? Like if you're not the one in the band, you're not the one a part of the crew facilitating things. If you are strictly along for the ride, if it was, if it was vice versa, like us just, if it was you going to a work function of your wives, yeah, right. It's going to be, it's going to get old after a while. Yeah. Right it's away. the same idea. Like, and I think that's the disconnect that people have about it is like, Oh, it'd be awesome to just be backstage and just uh. fly on the wall and just hang out with them and stuff like that. It's like if you did that night after night, you would be like, why am I still here? Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing of going to like a, a work function. I don't want to go to a work function uh. and just hang out and be at this thing and try to be funny or, you know, witty with your f work friends or your boss. Or it's the same damn thing, man. It's the exact same thing. Totally. You do get into this Seattle, though, that where she does come back. And I thought it was a pretty cool creative choice that when she finally gets into the room and sees Izzy and they have that conversation where he doesn't seem to know where he is. Oh, Seattle. They, they make a creative choice to stay on her face. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's here and we're only looking at her listening to Chris, like, try to explain himself. Yeah. Normally, it would go back and forth, like mm. show her reacting to what he's saying, but mm. it just stays on her. And she's just such a good actress that you can read everything you need to read on her face there in that moment. Oh, she's 100% a better actress than Mark Wahlberg is. Yeah. So, yeah. So they're like, yeah, let's just. Yeah, absolutely. Let's just stay on Jennifer. Yeah, good well, call. I, and I, th I think that there's also things happening in the background of Jennifer Aniston's shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That obviously the, the other girl, right? But the, there's there's other things. It's. It's more important to show her in this place that neither of them really probably belong. Yeah. Right. But he is he's infatuated with the life and he's fully in, into it now where she is still fish out of water in this point. And again, it's those little lines of like her that other girl coming. It's like, I gotta do them first because I gotta <laughs> shift. Get to I, gotta, work. <laughs> I gotta get to work. Do you work at Chubby's? <laughs> it's like <laughs> you it's like if I get to be with Izzy tonight, I'm going to shit bricks. Well, that'll certainly leave an impression on it. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> what, does P stand for? what does P stand for, yeah. Matt? Per per personal friend. Per personal, personal, personal friend. Personal yeah. friend. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's like, oh, yeah, nothing s says respect. Like cramming a strip of lycra up your ass, right? It's like, <laughs> you said it, sister. It's, like, <laughs> it's so funny, man. Like, and, and it's, it's, it's kind of heartbreaking at this point too, because you know, he, he's not, he doesn't actually care. Right. I'll come back to Seattle with you. We're yeah. in Seattle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like we're, weirdo. we're in Seattle. Dude, like he's, he's gone. He's gone at this point. Yeah, right. So and, it's over. And she's, yeah, she she's realizes her that life. and she's like, fuck, I have this present and not anymore. Yeah. I wanted to know what was in there, but we never prop. Ah, oh. got it. Ooh, here's a prop. <laughs> You Are present. you gonna open it? Yeah. You're gonna open it and oh, find out what it is? Oh, I'm gonna open it. What do you think? I think it's a big portrait. Yeah. I it's think like, it's it looks a like a giant like poster. The lyrics to the <laughs> song that he wrote her. Bread. Oh. Yeah. Stop it. That's what that's your prop? No, no. Oh, you think no. it's on there? No, yeah. I think it's I think that it or I think it's his like his first like magazine cover or something like okay, that, maybe. Okay. Or you that's know, cool. something like that, like his first whatever like a, a big first was yeah. for him. Okay. You know? Yeah. What What about you, man? Prop on this one? Ooh, I think I'm going to take his. I'd have to. I have to be remiss because it's a music movie, 
and I have I would be remiss to not take a musical instrument from oh, it. But yeah, I'm gonna yeah. take his acoustic guitar from the ending and then smash it right in the fuck front of him. <laughs> <laughs> and then go and, and walk away. Later. Later. Like dude. you're talking like Animal House style yep, against exactly. the wall. Sorry. That's exactly what I thought of. That's uh, you just <laughs> hand it back to him. <laughs> All right. Well, mine's not that cool. I want a Bobby Beers. I want the scarf that he goes back for. He's like, yeah. see this? It's my scarf. Nice. Yeah. That's good. I want that scarf. scarf. But it smells amazing. I'll, I might kind of put it around my thing here. And like I mean that. Yeah. I, I bet it smells oh, amazing. It does. It has to. Yeah, of course it does. Yeah. It smells better than his wig. 100%. We do uh, got to consult the Jarrett, <laughs> the Jarrett Layoff Confused Breakfast Actor Database. Do you have any idea who the leading actor, actress is of any movie we've done that has appeared in this movie? Said it ain't Spall. It's our first for Spall. I don't think you're going to get this one because I didn't know that she was in this movie she. until Jarrett pointed it out. It's not his mom, is it? Nope. Julie Michaels is in this movie. She's a groupie. Uh, if you remember Julie Michaels, she was the the naked dancer in Roadhouse, <laughs> uh, the blonde in Roadhouse, wow. who was also in Point Break. She was the one that gets shot in in Anthony Kiedis's house in Point Break. <laughs> wow. Yep. So Holy she is cow. that. This is her third time she's been in a movie we've done. Good job, Gary. Oh, man. Dude, other dude. other than that, that's that's it. This is a pretty. Uh, <laughs> Pretty bare, not bones. pretty bare bones. Was this our for first us. Jennifer Aniston? Second, too? we just did. Um, oh shit, we just did one. Uh, Jennifer Aniston a couple weeks ago. Oh my god. Oh no. Why, why can't we think of this? Because oh, I can't pull up my thing. We don't even know what city we're in, man. No, like, man. dude, we're just we're living the life. Office we space. We oh, can't duh, remember duh. the movies. We, we covered just did. the window up. We can't. We don't know what time we don't know it what is. What time is, is. is it? What? <laughs> All right. Yeah, well, let's right. move on to scene four. So <laughs> six months later, Izzy reports to the next series of Steel Dragon recording sessions with song ideas. They're rejected by the band, and he realizes he was only recruited to sing and would have no input on the band. On the next tour, he invites a fan on stage to take his place and leaves Steel Dragon. I shot every damn thing, man. Shot everything you could see, you know? It's awesome, man. You should bring your girlfriend out there. And then, like, dude, what he says after that. Yeah. What uh, John Bonham says yeah. after that? What does he say? Uh, uh, Jason said, Bonham. Yeah, I would, but she's busy with some yearbook committee or something. She says, that, "Yeah, she, yeah, she, <laughs> she's so busy right now. I guess there's some yearbook oh committee bullshit." Oh my god! <laughs> You're just like, uh, wow, uh, <laughs> not good, man. Uh, not not good. good, man. It's a big old yikes. Uh, so, but this is, dude. This is I wild. killed everything Sean. I saw, man. <laughs> Sean, you pointed this out earlier that he does. He he's in a band with his friends. And he wants nothing to do with writing music. All he wants to do is play Steel uh, Dragon tunes. And now that he's in Steel Dragon playing Steel Dragon tunes, he's like, oh, I'd like to write original music. Yeah. This is just, this is just fucking stupid. Yeah. That this is the thing that ends it for him. Right. Something he wants nothing to do with. That now he's like, but now I do this. Well, and I look, I drew the artwork. Yeah. Like, what the why, fuck? It's why it makes him kind of to be an asshole because like, you didn't realize that you were so far behind everyone else mm -hmm. at this point. And now you're blaming everybody oh, that's else. That's a great way to put it, though, man. You're, like, you had blamed everybody else for not doing what you thought was right at the time. But, like, what, what was right at the time was where you ended up years later. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, yeah. You, 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 it's like you trapped yourself. You trapped yourself living, wanting to be Bobby Beers. And that was it. And then... You didn't. Something had to happen so you could move on from that. Mm -hmm. So, Bob becoming basically Bobby Beers in the actual street, Steel Dragon was what was enough of a catalyst or enough of a feeling of success for you to feel like you could write your own shit. Well, a whole and a half, and I'm pretty. I'm proud of shit to have written it. <laughs> You know, I think Hole and a Half is a pretty great song. I'm proud of shit to have written it. That's another great fucking line. It seemed really delivery. genuine, it too. Does. It did. <laughs> so, but uh, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. You, for some reason, I never really even thought about it like that, too, that now he's coming in and he wants to write it. But it is. It's a constant play on... He got everything he wanted, and now he's bored with it. Mm -hmm. That's grass is always greener. And it's this grass is always greener. The first time he's rolling into Kirk's Kirk's place to that studio, he's like, "Oh, we're nobody. We're, we're not. We're not famous. Like, yeah, we're so excited to be here and stuff. We're just trying to get in ourselves, guys." And then this time he's rolling in in Batman's car. And he's like, he's like, all right, guys, I gotta go. You gotta let me go. Uh, you gotta it. let me go. I'm so cool. Yep. 
that is like I'm so burnt out from just being so jaded. fucking cool. Yeah. yeah, and you're jaded. Yeah, yeah, man. And he's just an idiot. He doesn't even know how this shit works. Like three years later, and I think yeah. I think I think that's almost like the saddest part of it is like after it, all this is like, said and done, they kind of feel they're like, oh man, like you thought you were gonna write songs, bro. dude. Like they were, shit. they were literally <laughs> caught off guard by this <laughs> yes, when were. he walked in. <laughs> And had these ideas written, and Guys, well, I'm not done with it yet. I mean, I I've God. never had anyone show up with artwork to an album before we've even written it. That's fair. <laughs> what is he doing? That's fair. I just thought like maybe we could write the album based off my artwork. Yeah, I thought I, I don't know. I thought we were, I thought we were, <laughs> I thought we were gonna like sit around in the living room and like with acoustic guitars <laughs> and like write some riffs, and I was gonna hang out with Goad and like. <laughs> What? <laughs> I barely talked. I barely talked. Him. You talked shared about six words with that. I thought we were gonna go up to Goad's Ranch and kill we shit, and then stuff. and then write music about it. And I thought that's how you guys wrote all your music. Well, I and then he even says he even has the fucking audacity to say, "Well, I know that I know that you and AC write most of the, most of the music. I it's know like this. All the music. Yeah, I know this stuff. It's like, well, why are, why are you fucking bringing this shit in then? <laughs> you know, dude, like." This isn't this isn't fucking underneath the no underneath the porn fucking theater you know what no. I mean? like, it's not <laughs> this is a big time operation yeah but there's this moment too like I love this so much when he and now he has the conversation with Matts mm. and it was, Matt's, a, it was a cool scene dude though. and he and he really he really puts some insight into this that I think is important like Matts basically describes rock like rock and roll in this conversation he basically says that when you're young. You want to stay wild forever and you want to do crazy shit and you want to stay up all night and you want to drink and do drugs and play rock and roll because you're going to be young forever. Yeah, but I mean, then what, what's wrong with that, Mike? No, I'm just saying <laughs> you avoid, you know, like avoiding <laughs> adult responsibilities is yeah. what rock and roll is all about. But then you can't stop the passing of time like everybody gets older and you get too old all of a sudden where all of a sudden you've crossed over this hump to be like, oh, fuck. I can't be doing what I used to be doing, but it's too late now because I have to keep doing this and I fucked up. Mm. And like he he perfectly describes that he's like, we're not happy. I'm not happy that this is my life and I don't have a family and kids. Yeah. But like, what else am I going to do? And he, he did have a wife. Right? Yes, and exactly. He, he explains that taking a piss. Yeah. Go take a piss. Yeah. It wasn't like his girlfriend. He was married. Yeah. And now and he, he he is reg he regrets that mm -hmm. he's not going to tell you that he regrets it, but you right now he's it. like he's like yeah um, this is it for me like I can't do anything else. That's why I think his performance is maybe one of the best ones. Like it is the best one. It, I think it is yeah. the best I think one, you're right? right? I think yeah. it is the best one. I, I think it's Jennifer. After that, may yeah, maybe maybe she's tied. just yeah. It's just it, not she doesn't have much to her. do. Yeah, 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 you're right. Yeah, but at the same time, like I think it is. I think because he is. He is the one. He's he's like the the oracle or the 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 person that's give that's feeding us what we need as an audience, really. You know, to understand really what's going on. He had a wife. He walked away, and then from there, yeah, yeah, she ended up marrying my best friend. She came to a show, married my best friend. They have three gorgeous kids, and it's like he is lamenting. Yep. Like he is literally like. Yeah. Ten years ago, it was fine. Yeah. He's like, oh, cool, whatever. Yeah, it's whatever, you know. Now he's going, uh And and it, and and he he says it in that moment, like my whole life was just all written out for me. Like you know, I was gonna finish mm -hmm. schooling, I was gonna get a job, I was gonna we were gonna move into a house, we were gonna do this thing, and I guess, and I left, and he just walked out. It's scary it was when you're cold-hearted shit. It's scary uh, when you're young, and when you're older, you're like, oh, I I want this to all be spelled out. I'm, yeah, I'm fine with this. Yeah. Like that's that's the that's the thing you like uh, you would that's the thing that you tell your kids to not walk away mm -hmm. from the right and then um, yeah I think the the other conversation too I think that was that's actually it's it's another great insight into uh, the rock and roll world and that's the one that when Kirk pulls Chris aside just before that before yep. they go in there uh, we're there at the bar he says. He's like, look, Steel Dragon, P our fans know who Steel Dragon is. We need to uphold what they understand. And to do so, we continue to forge on uh -huh. with us writing the music, 
you sing the songs with your voice. This is what Steel Dragon is. It's a juggernaut train that doesn't stop because you felt like you had an art project in our uh, fucking yeah. off time. It doesn't just change yeah. because you had a thought. And as much, and it's a shitty way to say it, as much as I admire it in some small way. <laughs> it's like, fuck, that's cool. So like, but at the same time, you're kind of like, yeah, he's right. Yeah, I mean, he's totally right. If you want to continue being like, what is this, like millionaire musicians, then you just let the juggernaut continue. Yep. Yeah. Jugging their knot. Well, and then <laughs> again, we said it earlier on where it's to they're fulfilling this uh, idea of what they are to yeah. other people. Exactly. You know, that's it's all they're doing. Like they are making music. It's you know they the lyrics. Like the lyrics are all the same. Yeah. The, ri the riffs and everything. It's all laid out. There's not a lot of formula to the music, but it somehow is successful for them. But like the attitude and the road and like the stories that are yep. built upon all of the music is what people are buying into. And mm -hmm. so they have to fulfill the idea of what they the fans like about yeah. them. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> all, all the and all all of this, by the way, all those songs could have just been written by an AI. Engine. They really could have. Hey, will you write the pour some whiskey, pour some wine? Yep. <laughs> I stole my best friend's girl for a night. It's just like, yeah, it's just, just uh, hey, will you just AI, will you just make some more music, write some more lyrics about sex, drugs, and rock and roll? Hey, That's write, literally it. Write a song about uh, rock and roll never stopping. Yeah. Rock, rock, rock till you drop. drop. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's rock, good. rock, never that's, stop. Man, wow. they really got it. And, uh, yep, that's it. I, I just, I think it's a, I think there's actually a decent amount of insight into, like, the whole Mu uh, well, not even music world. I think just the celebrity world yeah, as it, as it is. When you said it, that that train just keeps going, as evidenced by when Bobby Beers left the band, the train kept going, and now we've got Miles Kennedy in the crowd that's going to get up on stage, <laughs> and the train's going to literally keep going. Yep. And there's no big deal. What's here. your name, man? My name's Mike, but people <laughs> call me Thor. Why? Why? <laughs> like, that would be my first fucking question. <laughs> Why? I got a <laughs> and like, can you just can so you just, can you just calm the fuck down for a second? This is a big this is a big moment in my life. Okay, <laughs> well, VH1 is gonna have to report on this later. Okay, <laughs> just imagine Sean at your next show, <laughs> that like you're you're halfway through the show and like you look out at the crowd and then you turn around and the drummer is completely been replaced. <laughs> With a new drummer, <laughs> middle, let's say Camden middle song. walks let's off say, stage. Let's say Camden leaves, and going? all of a sudden, it's just <laughs> let's say it's fucking a guy named Travis, <laughs> and he all of a sudden's like, "Yeah, bro, I know all your songs," and he just sings like, "You don't." That's weird. You I'm don't just <laughs> you don't just continue on with the show. That doesn't ha the audience isn't going to be like, yeah. like, dude, if you went to see your favorite band, and all of a sudden a kid from the crowd like. Keep in mind, this this movie potentially ruined concerts for me. All the big artists now pull a fan yeah. from the crowd. I don't want to see a fan from the fucking crowd <laughs> sing a fucking song. I, don't do it. I paid to watch you perform this shit. Yes. Do not do that. And now all of a sudden the whole rest of the show is this guy that people are like, who the fuck is this? And that's like, <laughs> let's let's be real here, okay? Because if, if you really think about this, like it was it was it was so amazing. He pulled me up for this song. Wow. Stand up, stand up and shout. And they have that moment on stage, and then they do the guitar solo, and they go backstage, and like, hey man, what's your name? Thor got a thing. <laughs> and he's like, you want to you want to blow the roof off this place? And he's like, are you serious? Uh, yeah. It's like it's like of course I'm serious. It's like, heck yeah I do. And he's like, all right, go out there, man. Go out there. Go get it. And then then. What actually happens on stage is he runs out there and he's like, oh, shit. I well, just fight for the good world for the night. Well, dude, they, oh, imply, they kind of imply that he's not in the band at the end of this oh, movie. Yeah, yeah. Like, well, he knows the songs. Like, he can sing the songs, but he's probably just like, stand up and shout. Like, no stage presence. And then when the song's over, he's like, <laughs> so. I, uh. I, uh, I'm not sure the set list. Um, I'm, I'm cool. Yeah. Not. <laughs> not. <laughs> so, here's the next song. They kicked him out after that. They show. were like, they were like, look, kid, I guess you did it, but the, the, you're not the sound we're looking for because yeah. you sound completely different from what we we were after. 
And then the report after that is, in a surprising turn of events, Chris Izzy Cole left on stage uh, for their Steel Dragon show uh, and left a fan in place who unfortunately had a nervous breakdown. <laughs> <laughs> Hasn't been has heard been, of from been since. Been hospitalized after getting beaten up by the band and several no, fans. No, what really <laughs> happened is, do you <laughs> know that shows like this with all that pyrotechnics, he wandered into yeah. a fucking pyrotechnic <laughs> He wandered. Not, after you have wandered, to know where those are. Rock, and rock it. till you... <laughs> After watering into a dragon flare unknowingly, he's been hospitalized for the last two weeks. The tour has been canceled. <laughs> and Steel Dragon is facing a massive lawsuit from his parents. <laughs> Back to you, Tom. Back to you. <laughs> All right, let's finish this up. Final scene. So Chris makes his way to Seattle, starts a new band with his old friend and former bandmate Rob, allowing him to write his own music. While walking one evening, Emily sees a flyer for his band posted on a (laughs) wall. Sure does. I I lost it. He was singing. Uh, She sees a flyer posted on the wall, takes it down. In the final scene, Chris is singing with a band in the bar. Emily walks in. Chris leaves the stage, speaks to her. They reconcile, ending the film with a gross kiss. He's got a real bad (laughs) habit of just walking off stage. He really does. (laughs) (laughs) You you realize we were doing something up here? He's like, this isn't, like, dude, this is a small show. It's our first gig. Like, will you please just finish the song? Like, it's just that's like all I need. it's like me bringing up a point like yeah. in a in a podcast like this and just being like okay and that's all I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I gotta go make out with my girlfriend. And I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, anyways, I, so I guess we'll talk until he comes back and he wants to finish <laughs> what he started. I guess. Yeah, I, I think uh, I guess I'll just I'll just play a little bit of a solo. <laughs> I'll just try to riff on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> anyway. Oh, he's back now. Oh, thank God. Like that's that's rock, how Timothy to you drop. <laughs> that's how Timothy Oliphant must have felt in that <laughs> exactly. situation. He doesn't care. He's like, we're finally doing originals. He's like, I'm happy. He's like, it's okay. I'm part of a grunge band in the best era ever. So this uh, the 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 part I don't like about this song is that this sounds nothing like him. Like yes. from yeah. what we've assumed he sounded like to this. Do you know who the singer of this song is? Isn't this actually the Verve? It's pipe? actually it's an actual the Verve pipe song. Yeah. And he was the bass player in Blood Pollution. Right. But it just like it just doesn't fit anymore. And all these people are I know it's a play on like the grunge era. Do they make it seem like he started grunge? Is that what they're trying I to think imply? They're trying no to imply way. That he started grunge, that he was the proprietor of a new form. Look how intently everybody's like, This is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> like no Eddie one better. has ever sat in a coffee shop and been like, Wow. Can we just can, can we talk about this for a second? Because because he does say he does say it's like th- he's having these like kind of reconciling moments with uh, with Rob, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, they're having some great back and forth. He's like, "Well, hey, I got I got hole in the half, like waiting in the wings <laughs> and stuff." And they're having a good moment. That's a funny joke. And but they dip that audio down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little subtle fuck you to him still. <laughs> yeah, nobody still wants to fucking hear about it. Okay. <laughs> no one wants to hear it. No one wants to hear about it. All right. Uh, <laughs> but they, then then it's like. You, you hear him and he's like, well, I'm thinking about getting a bit, putting together a band a- again and stuff. He's like, well, hey, man, like, I've got a hole in half. And then and then it goes to them on stage. And it's like, really? You were thinking about putting together a band and you decided to get a cello player? Mm-hmm. Bullshit you did. Nope. Yeah. Nobody <laughs> fucking thinks that. Nobody. <laughs> Nobody. You, f- you, you absolute jackass. You got to cut your hair. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. I'll try it to here. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Timothy uh, Olivant's hair is... Yeah. Oh, mm. it's pretty good. It's, a, it's it's like a it's like a bowl cut and a bob cut. Like like he's met he's and doing Oasis. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> thanks. Thanks for that. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. I well, and then too, like the whole thing, how he basically, I mean, he he made money being in Steel Dragon, right? Yeah. But yet he leaves everything he owns. He had to have had a, an apartment or a house for the last two three years. Yeah. He leaves everything. His Batmobile. Everything to no money, and he, and he fucking he fucking hitchhikes. He hitchhikes to Seattle He's with like, no money. What the fuck happened? All he had to do, all he had to do, even if he was like really caught up for like a tough time, right? Like all he had to do was go and be like, "Well, I'll just sell the Batmobile, <laughs> or 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 maybe drive the Batmobile to Seattle, two, two gigs." <laughs> Can you imagine? Fucking awesome. Like, 
Oh yeah, Chris Cole's gonna be playing tonight. Who's Who? that? And he pulls up in the Batmobile. Oh, that weirdo. <laughs> oh yeah, that guy. Oh, you mean the guy that left his dream to write music? Oh yeah, see that one. That's an IOU for a Batmobile. <laughs> Might want to hang on to that one. <laughs> Hold on to that one. <laughs> you got yourself a Ferrari, Matt? Like, I, I just think that it, it's it's true. It's like, yeah, you know, I just uh, I just wasn't feeling it anymore. You know, like the songs, it just wasn't me, and uh, you know, it just felt like it was time to move on. You know, with six figures in my bank account and, you know, seven figures in assets. Yeah. I, mean, I just figured I'd go and find myself on the road with a complete comfort safety net. So yeah, I'm such you know. a tortured artist. Well, we also <laughs> need that. We need the image for the movie poster, too. So uh, at yeah. some point I need to hitchhike with yeah. a guitar. So I'm going to have to carry this this guitar around over my shoulder yeah. like I'm walking down a road. Or like you're in the airport being like, a, I play guitar. In a flannel. <laughs> Anybody see that I play guitar? I just wanted people to know that I play guitar, but yeah. I don't even play guitar in my band. I have a theory that anyone that walks through the airport with a guitar doesn't actually know how to play guitar. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's just filled with like I've, I've traveled with good guitar players and they don't bring guitars. They with them. they <laughs> or they, they check them in they really nice cases. <laughs> choose not to because they don't want somebody to be like, dude, do you play guitar? Oh my god, well, check it out! It's a soft case. I just bought it. If you're if you're not a teenager. Or <laughs> first of all, I, I, if, if it's in a soft time. case, they are psychotic. Yes, they are. And I, yeah, absolutely. That's Which is most of the time how you see people in airports with the stupid <laughs> backpack ones that go straight up and they don't know how to play guitar. If my, if, if my son ends up playing guitar, I'll let him walk through the airport like once I or twice. I did it one time as a teenager. I'll do let him do it once or twice. So that way he can understand. It's like, you know what? I you shouldn't don't do, do this. this. I shouldn't do this. I'll let him figure it out, right? But dad, I want to play guitar on the beach. Oh man. It's like, well, I want you to like I wanted to get picked up by like some trucker with my guitar and I'd sing him a song in the cab of his truck and yeah. that kind of thing. Twenty twenty four. We don't do that anymore. We don't do right? that. All right. This is the world of AI, chat GPT. We that writes songs about sex, drugs, and rock and roll. We don't need your acoustic guitar, nope. Mark Wahlberg. Thanks, Mark. So and Timothy Oliphant. Yep. Even though I really like you guys. Anything else you boys want to talk about? God, no. Okay, we have finished this movie with a modern eye. We need to give it a modern day rating. I think we started with AJ on this one. What do you got, bro? I actually still really fucking love watching this movie, guys. <laughs> like, all the things that we're bagging on, and I, I want this to be known, all the things that we're bagging on that in the music world, the industry, like all this other stuff going on, like, that's not going to happen. They pulled a lot of fun, like tidbits, especially like the tour things. TVs going out the windows, gluing stuff to the ceiling. That I actually agree with. Those are, I think, that's really funny. Those are real things that happened from like the the time of like Motley Crue, Guns and Roses, all these rock rock bands, these you know metal bands, hair metal bands. Those are things that happened in in the world. Like the, somebody's wife running off with Peter Gabriel um, makes a lot of sense. Like. All the things that we're bagging on is what I think honestly makes for such a fun watching experience. So do I think it's like the greatest like the greatest music movie ever? No, I don't. I'm not going to say that. But I do think that this probably deserves more credit than it was certainly due, especially getting shut down, you know, literally getting buried um, upon its release date. Mm -hmm. And so I do think that it's a solid movie. I think it's a lot of fun. I think there's some really great performances in there. And uh, I actually, every now and again, I will watch this movie um, and revisit it as something just fun to turn on and kind of think about the music world and that grass is greener mentality. So all that being said, um, man, I think I'm going to have to give this, I'm going to give this a 6.8. 6.8, Sean, what about you? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's fun. I, I think it's really funny in some places. I think uh, it's kind of underrated for being such an entertaining movie. Uh, whatever you want to get out of it, you know, I, I think it, you could be entertained by like when I was a kid, I was entertained by like what it was actually going for. And now I'm entertained by what I think is funny about it. You know, yeah. Um, commenting on that sort of era of rock and roll i think it does very subtly and you kind of have to dig into a little bit to even get it which i kind of appreciate about it um you said uh, mark Wahlberg's performance about like even it seems like he's singing i think that's very impressive i think uh spall is very good i think anison's uh, incredible um but yeah i mean it's it's fine i will watch it every once in a while i'm glad it's out of jail 
Uh, I will give this a 6.2. 6.2. I, I don't know, man. Maybe it just caught me at a, at the wrong time. Like, There's a lot of things that I don't li- like about this movie of cliches and uh, trying to make the world think that this is kind of how things are in the like the music business and and I think it is it's weird coming back around on this because I the, the tribute band thing is like such a big thing in the world right now it's just interesting how that this was like 20 plus years ago but I don't know like I don't think it's Mark Wahlberg's best uh, there's not enough Jennifer Aniston I love Matt's in it mm. I love the, the saving grace for me is the music like the music fucking great like it is a great I used to hate on heavy metal so much our like hair metal type stuff and now it's like <laughs> I kind of like that. It's anyway, Frank. I was singing Stand Up and Shout all day yesterday. Yeah, dude. Just because it's like, <laughs> it's just so awesome. Some of those songs written for this movie are yes. fantastic. And then their their song placement outside of that yes. is also phenomenal. So, But ultimately, like, I don't know if I'll watch this movie again on, on purpose, like, anytime soon. So I have to take that into care. Damn. Ca- yeah, it's, it's okay. It's I, I it's thought it funny. should have gone to jail, but it's fine. That's that's uh, a good point. <laughs> four four, four point nine for me is what I'm doing. Whoa. We got to check out Michael Giuliano though. He says, considering that I didn't know this movie existed three days ago, I was surprised by how charming I found Rockstar. It's not groundbreaking in this plot. It relies pretty heavily on a lot of the same cliches and music tropes you've already seen, and there aren't too many standout performances other than Wahlberg. Oh, oh. Still, damn. I'm a sucker when it comes to music, even if metal isn't my thing, and the soundtrack is pretty catchy. Timothy Oliphant makes a little more than a glorified cameo in one of his earliest movie roles. It's very true. But as he as usual, he nails every scene he's in. Mark Wahlberg and Jennifer Aniston have interesting chemistry. I'm not sure if I 100% believe it, but there's something there. And she may actually provide most of the comic relief in the movie Mm -hmm. as opposed to pure sex appeal, which is a nice change of pace. Uh, what I really found interesting about this movie after doing a bit of research is the amount of either fun coincidences or intentional choices it makes when it comes to casting. For a movie that's based on a true story about a regular guy replacing a lead singer of a hugely popular mainstream band, in this case Tim Owens who joined uh, Judas Priest, there are also two other replacement cast members in the movie. First, there's Steel Dragons drummer AC, who's played by Jason Bonham, son of le- legendary Led Zeppelin drummer John Bonham, who actually played with the surviving members of the band on several occasions in his dad's place. Mm-hmm. Then there's Miles Kennedy, who plays Thor, the enthu- enthusiastic fan who takes over for Chris at the end of the movie. Like Chris in the movie, he was apparently offered the chance to audition as lead vocalist of Velvet Revolver, and he also filled in to replace Axl Rose for Guns N' Roses induction ceremony to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Maybe I'm giving this film a little too much credit, but I just found that those coincidences fit perfectly with the vibe of the movie. Okay, enough rambling. Overall, this was a decent movie, but I probably wouldn't go back to it anytime soon. Modern day rating 7.25. All right, man. So that takes us to 6.29, fellas. 6.29. We got to see where that's going to land on the thing. Uh, That's right here. Six point. What did I say? 6.29? 6.29. 6.29 on the modern day ratings is. Got to go down a little bit. 6.29. That's going to be all alone at the 120th spot, just below basketball, just above Weekend at Bernie's. Yes. Above Weekend at Bernie's. Yes. Yes. It is better than Weekend at Bernie's per our rating. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. It, it, I, I, I mean, that's it is what watch, it is. I want to watch that more than I want to watch Weekend at Bernie's See, right I'm, now. I'm opposite. I'm so Weekend at Bernie's. I think I'm Weekend at Bernie's. Right well, yeah. you get, it's too bad because our ratings are gospel. These are gospel yeah. now. That's so. true. Well, I hope you enjoyed the episode. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Tune in next week as we discuss Snatch. Followed by oh, shit. nice. Followed by Biodome. Ah, uh, that is out of jail now as well. We're going <laughs> through all jail. these movies and letting them have their chance. Can't okay. wait Biodome's for, gonna be a fun one. Can't wait for Boondock Saints too, guys. It's coming Christmas Day, 2024. 2024. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're it. coming in the studio yeah. on Christmas Day to record. Actually, it. time out. Uh, while while you, well, <laughs> oh, if, you you anyway, go, ahead, look. go back this time last year. Listen to Super Mario Brothers. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> Shit, <Yep>. movie. Anyway, <laughs> while while Mike's looking that up, so we can confirm that Boondock Saints too. All Saints Day is going to be recorded on Christmas Day. Fuck. Uh, <laughs> Chris, Chris, Christmas Day is a Wednesday. That's our release <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> We are releasing. It's going to be the release day. <laughs> Merry <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> Boondock Saints Merry too. Christmas to all you guys. <laughs> All Troy right. Duffy, you got your wish. Okay. We know you've we know you've we, we know you've watched all of our stuff <laughs> on Boondock Saints. Uh, right. 
Thank you so much for listening, guys. We really hope that you uh, you are subscribed to the podcast that you're listening to at this point in time, uh, if you've made it this far into the show. Uh, we really do appreciate you listening along. And check us out on social media. All the social media is Confused Breakfast, at Confused Breakfast. Just search Confused Breakfast and check it out on YouTube. We love seeing you on YouTube because you can see us on YouTube. Check it out. Confusedbreakfast.com. You can see the merch that we have. You can get some shirts. You can get some stickers. You can get some hats, some sweatshirts, whatever the hell you want with our logo on it. It's going to be there. It's going to be fun. Confusedbreakfast.com as well to see the ratings of the movies that we've covered. Um, you go back this time last year and listen to Super Mario Brothers. That didn't do too well. No. You can see that on our website. So go check those out. Thank it's you very much. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> support our sponsors for this episode. Also support us at patreon.com slash confused breakfast. We are produced by Upload Media Group. In Cedar Rapids, we got Craig on the controls. <laughs> Woo! Upload media group.com and we are on the Cloud 10 iHeart Podcast Network. Learn more at cloud10.fm. Stand up a child. Bye. Stand up.